Hello, back once again for the Renegade Master. This week, I'm beyond excited. Uh, Ian, Stevie, couldn't give a shit less about you because oh, thanks, we've man. got a brand new friend in the house. He's brought all the treats with him. Jack, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, so, Pleased to be here. Jack, you've watched the podcast a couple of times before. You didn't mind it. You thought that these guys seem more right to sit down with. I liked your vibe. Yeah? Thank you. I tell you what, I'm liking your vibe because you have bought not one, not two, but a handful of treats. What was it? You said he's he's chimmered us. Yeah, he's on a chimmer. I uh, may. I tell you what, I have to agree. Other than chimmer, you are probably the second in line for the most drams bought to our studio here. Uh, and you're bringing us on a tour of the Isle of Arran this week, yeah? North and south. North uh, and south. Cool. Tell us. Tell us a little bit about your passion because it's, it's kind of singing from this shelf over here. <laughs> uh, so here's a selection, yeah, from my, from my booth shelf. Um, Lacranza and Lag Malt. Um, I've been in Tarran Whiskey since 2011, so about 100 years ago now. Um, I first visited the island on a kind of uh, quasi spiritual retreat at uni. Okay. Not for whiskey, just for like wildlife and meditation. Love that. Okay. Uh, I actually didn't like whiskey until visiting the island, so it really was a, a hard conversion. Not much meditation <laughs> going on if you were getting stuck into the drought. Or and, uh, very intense meditation. Yeah. <laughs> and. I hadn't heard of uh, Lockranza Distillery or Aaron Distillery as it was then. Okay. And I think it was a case of like right place, right time, size of the distillery, how long it had been going. It's That distillery has been going since 1995. It's right at the crest of the wave of all of these new distilleries, which you've covered on your podcast. There's a new one every week, it seems. These guys were there mid-90s taking a real gamble at um, resurrecting whiskey production on the island. For sure. Um, they have a really good reputation for very friendly staff. Um, easing you into the whiskey scene as I found they throw a really good festival every year and through that festival you kind of network in not just with other whiskey fans and whiskey fans are the best um, but also production team management team all these kind of access points you wouldn't get if it was like I'm going to go to McAllen maybe I'll meet uh, whoever runs McAllen these days the big telly tubby um, and uh, <laughs> and so yeah it's kind of drawn me back I was saying about three or four times a year um and through those years that's quite a pilgrimage three or four times a year i like yeah. it i like it um some people go to malaga some people go to japan i go to <laughs> west coast of scotland um and so stock up yeah and over that time they've their popularity has grown and they've decided to expand and in that they built another distillery on the south end of the island at lag so we have a kind of smattering of a selection of non-peter drams from locranza and then let's uh barrage our taste buds with some peter stuff at the end love it sounds like a plan to me sounds like a plan okay cool so i mean obviously aaron is is up there is it your favorite distillery yeah so i was gonna i was gonna say if there's a distillery you like more than this it might be frightening i don't know i don't know what that would look like i am an aaron stan cool um, and i guess at the start of my journey i i've had kind of advice from people do you want to collect stuff do you want to just drink stuff it was a bit of both for me then it was, do you want to collect widely or do you want to try and focus on just one? So a bit like the Shire Horse with the blinkers down. It's like, just focus on Aaron. Yep. It's easier that way. Can build up quite a nice knowledge of the styles of malts. They're also known a lot for their wine casks. So there's lots of interesting variations on a theme. Um, I haven't bought any of the kind of core range with me because I'm assuming you've all tried the Aaron 10, which is delicious. Barrel Reserve, which is like seven or eight-year-old uh, barrel, um, bourbon barrel. Uh, there's the Bodega, which is Sherry, and then there's the Bothy, which is a quarter cask. You can get them everywhere. For sure. And, and they're great, and they're rightly popular. The Aaron 10 is a great price point, but these are, it, let's do a little niche deep dive. A little bit more of an esoteric dive into yeah. Aaron. I love it. Okay, very yes. cool. Um, Fantastic. Do you want to pour the first round? You, you tell where us where should you we want to start. start? You well, I think Jack leads the way. Yeah, here. absolutely. Stevie, uh, you're somebody who's also gotten heavily into Aaron recently. Yes. Uh, and I, as I said before we start filming, I'm going to take a big step back here, or do my best to anyway, uh, and shut up and let you two guys lead the way here because you are really, yeah, you've been hunting down a few bottles. A couple of these are actually yours, right? Yeah, a couple of them are mine. Um, I don't have the uh, vast knowledge that, that Jack probably has gathered in the last hundred years. Um, but I have, in the last two years, um, become a big fan of Aaron. I find that 
everything I've ever had has just blown me away. Right. Even the cool range is great. High you know? quality spirit. It's all high quality spirit. And what I really love about Aaron is how well it works in wine casks. Okay. You know, I really enjoy that personally. Yep. Hence why the two bottles I bought today are both um, in wine casks. Well, one champagne apparently, but we can talk about that. Um, so yeah, uh, big fan. I'm really looking forward. I haven't actually chunk or seen this much Aaron in one place before probably none of us have right for sure no but absolutely apart from the distillery um have you been to the distillery Jake no well no so I was supposed to be at the distillery for the first time this weekend just gone um was gonna bring my own little contribution to today and unfortunately we got locked out of the car we missed the ferry it all went completely peat tong I still actually need to reach out to the guys at Aaron and apologize for missing our booking um so I've never been it's something that I'm really keen to do we had booked it in for a friend of mine it was his 50th he'd come up to Scotland to visit and celebrate uh you know obviously we're based in air now so I can literally see it so from my, my from living room yeah. and I still haven't fucking been so yeah I think today if nothing else which I think I'll be enjoying a hell of a lot of whiskey from Aaron but I think you're going to spur me to really get on that boat jump over there quicker <laughs> uh, which I'm looking forward to you know but no like I say for me I'd agree seriously high quality liquid very robust it works in a variety of different way ways I don't know much about it though and actually you know uh, I admit this I didn't realize it was called Lock Rounds Distillery until Lag came on the scene I always knew it as Aaron Distillery, you know what? What happened there? Where was the? Uh, what's the? What's the idea with Lock Rounds or with Lag? Tell us, Jack. So before you're quite right, it was Aaron Whiskey, Aaron Distillery, and there was just one. But when you have two, and it's, it's the Isle of Aaron, then they decided let's split it to place names. So you have Isle of Aaron Distillers as the parent company, right? Have Lag Distillery in the south. So I'm not. Com I, I wasn't sure if I was imagining that because I did. I looked at the Malt Whiskey Yearbook and it went Aaron automatically. No, no, no. You've got to go Lock Rounds, haven't you? Okay. So what? Okay. So and Lock Rounds is just a place. Yeah, Lockrands is the village in the north. I mean, they're okay. branding it Aaron Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. For sure. For Lockrands, uh, um whiskey you can see. But uh, when you go to the distillery, it does say Lockrands. Um, I just realised I shouldn't have poured as big a dram. So <laughs> they will be smaller than this. <laughs> was, make it, you went hefty. You went in. Uh, yeah, no, big. for sure. Thank um, you, though. So what we've got here, this is uh, this has just been released for the German market. This is small batch. So um, one of the things I decided to collect when I couldn't go for all of the 20-year-old Aaron's is this range of small batch. So they're normally single casks or vattings of a couple of casks for their key markets. You, you're the German distributor. You sell a lot of Aaron, you get to have a few um, cask samples each year, and then you can pick something for your market. So nice. um, this is for Germany, for Kammerkirsch. They're celebrating their 100th anniversary. And this is bourbon and sherry in perfect harmony. In balance, sorry, not quite in perfect harmony, but in balance. Um, 46%, but what this is, the Aaron 10-year-old is mostly bourbon with a bit of sherry thrown in. I don't know if this is 50-50 sherry or bourbon, but this is um, seven and eight-year-old Lockranza whiskey, and it smells gorgeous, and it's kind of like chocolate and apple crumble, I find. Uh, Lockranza whiskey is known for its kind of orchard fruit notes, mm. and I, you can get that apple fruit note there, but then that sherry cask is doing something it's got a very, very sweet nose, hasn't it? Mm. And did you say 47%? Uh, this one is 46. Like 46. Their, um, like their core it range. It tastes a lot more punchy. If I was tasting that blind, yeah. I'd, I'd put that up there in the 50s. I was going to say that was going to blow me. It's full. Yeah. It is full. It's lovely. Yeah. It works really nicely at the strength. And as I understand it, that's the uh, the regional market's decision for the ABV. You get to pick the bottling strength. So if you want to have a few more bottles, you can water it down right. to 46%. Um, or, as we might see, you can keep it at a healthy 50 or there's even some 60% ones going yeah. around there, which are, which are crazy. I don't think this almost needs any more, actually. It works very well in 46. Yeah. Is anyone else getting quite a perfumed nose, though? Yes. Yeah. I, I got a little hint of that. Okay, because yeah. I had that with the glass I thought it was me because I've got... And I was like, what? Stupidly, I've got an aftershave on today, so I wondered if that was... Uh, right. No. What I was smelling, but... There is, like, a perfumed element, which I don't know if I was expecting. So you're saying this is bourbon and sherry exclusively? Mm-hmm. There's something on the nose that gives something else. The palate is, yeah. like you say, it's the orchard fruits, a little bit of chocolate, a little bit malty, but quite sweet and light and beautiful and very full for 46%. Yeah. Ooh. But the nose is tricking me at the minute. Yeah, the crumble note on the palate for me is is spot on. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah the nose, it's... 
I couldn't tell you what kind of sherry cask. That's the thing. They have they have the full range of sherry casks there. You can have uh, sherry hogshead, or you could have Honorosa sherry or Palo Cortado, and I yeah, don't yeah. know which sherry type it is. Um, I'm not a big sherry buff myself, and I find my palate leads more towards bourbon anyway. Yeah. Hence why I haven't bought hardly any bourbon with me for some reason. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Cause actually, yeah, quite a lot of those single casks and the white stags are leaning quite heavily towards the, the sherry side of things now, right? I know from some of the kind of Facebook and uh, online groups I'm in, like a lot of people, I think, especially after the rebrand, there were some quite dark batches of the 18 year old and some of these premium casks and single casks that have been coming out for different shops and stuff that seems to have actually brought a lot of people into Aaron that were kind of sherry heads moving away from other distilleries in Speyside and the Highlands that have you know overnight got a lot more expensive <laughs> sorry I didn't <laughs> no, I just like flying yeah. my throat um, yeah I don't know is this what you're seeing then there's just more sherry casks around at the moment because I thought there were more bourbon and now well, into it, I can't find it. I, I guess what I'm saying is I've seen a bit more kind of sherried stuff from Aaron. More specialist releases. Since the rebrand. And more specialist releases, yeah. More single casks. It was interesting. I, I, I remember when the rebrand came out, there were, I saw a bunch of people really hating on it online. I kind of looked at it and went, all right, it looks fine. Like I was not massively in favor one way or the other, but actually now I've kind of grown used to it. I, I really like what they've done. Yeah. with it i think it is a strong stuff. brand it's strong the branding is strong as say now it's accessible the colors were yeah before were kind of a bit of a smorgasbord whereas now it's like the slightly more muted style the the kind of the the it's fingerprint a bit more style modern and, and simplistic and yeah, isn't it because the old nice. the old the old style of branding was quite uh dated i would say yeah you know uh but nostalgia really creeps in very easily particularly in whiskey doesn't it and we all have our bottles that we remember when we first got into a brand and Definitely. can't help but like yeah. as five ten years past you're like oh i love that um, yeah. image of the castle that was on the box but um yeah I, I was chatting to to someone quite high up in the distillery about that rebrand a couple of weeks ago and they said yeah what we wanted when we rebranded the the taller bottle we had before it was fine but there were a lot of bottles that looked like that we we knew we had to change but when we changed, we didn't want people to just be like, yeah, okay. We wanted some people to be like, I hate it. Yeah. And then some people, I love it. And then you get a bit of noise. Yeah. And yeah. then over time, it settles down. And I think, as you say, it's, it's done that. And, they uh, did exactly that. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the other thing that I really like, which I don't think I've ever seen any other brand do, like this is Braille, right? On yeah. the boxes, yeah. Like the accessibility there of reaching out to other people and it's on the kind of the glassware as well like with the kind of isle of Aaron distillery that you, you know it's obviously not braille but i'm sure that's helpful they've for put a so much thought into a lot their packaging to it they yeah. really have and it's interesting not many people notice that to be honest no ian but that is one of the key things that to me again like you say it's kind of a little bit more muted it's a little bit more accessible from a visual standpoint but the fact that they put braille on the boxes is just a step above it really really is yeah um, what I'd say as well, just going back to what you said a minute ago, you know, kind of within the rebrand, maybe the style of Aaron changing or them reaching into slightly different uh, styles, slightly different markets. And kind of in line with what you said at the beginning, Stevie, is it is such a robust liquid. It works so well in wine cask, in sherry cask, and, and rightfully so as well, Jack, in bourbon, right? But I think whereas prior to the rebrand, I remember a lot of bourbon or bourbon and sherry since that i've seen and what got me interested in aaron where i was you know because i'm a sherry head or equally you know a bit of peat and some wine that sort of style that they were the expressions where i was like oh that looks cool yeah I, I think it was a single cask 17 or something that i tried at one point that i was just like oh my god it's exceptional you know yeah. uh, and again you know trying this at 46 and like you say we'll move on to some higher strength ones in a bit having tried different strengths it always seems to work well at different strengths so yeah i, I it's it's tough to find something that they're not doing right to be honest i find with that yeah. i don't know much about it but anytime i look at it it's just kind of like yeah it's, it's good all around well i think what you've also seen as well is you know i i would assume that there are more people coming into the distillery than in previous years because again when you look at auction especially especially things like this festival single cask the white stag release the music festival stuff you know five six years ago that would all auction like at or under rrp and now some of them are going for kind of significant 
premiums over, right? And there are people fighting for bottles of Aaron in a way that wasn't happening a few years ago. Yeah, Aaron is very popular on the uh, auction sites now. Um, and I mean, on that the- note, I think people maybe would think that if you don't know whiskey or if you're not in the auctions much, oh, well, whiskey is always on the up and up in auctions. It really isn't. It's like a few select brands that will keep the the, the bottle uh, market like really buoyant and really active. But I think you're right. You know, it's, it's very difficult for a brand to reach that sort of status where not only they're selling out at initial retail, but then all of a sudden there's a clamor and a, a almost a, an occult sort of, you know, view of like, I have to get this one. <laughs> Fuck, it's so, you you'd, know. You'd be, you'd, you'd be very upset how much I bid. In fact, I told you on, not I got this the second time around. I've been trying to bid on this for, for years. I didn't remember you saying to me. But I think I bid near four or 500 pounds on the pair, the uh, Bordeaux. Um, 15 with this and someone outbid me and I was like no no I can't I want it that much and it's not even worth that you mm-hmm. know well yep. you know but to, to someone well, yeah no for this, sure this better be I good now My the, the amount you talked about this with me my anticipation for this <laughs> is like <laughs> sky high I like now. it and that's all that's important mate <laughs> I like this first one I really do this is nice so sorry 10 years old uh, 7 and 8 years old 7 and 8 sorry yeah. I don't know where I got 10 years um, old from. So, and I think that's kind of reflected in the price point. So, a lot of the small batches are good prices. So, consulting my handwritten scribble, uh, it came on Germany fifty nine ninety nine euros. Fuck off! Pretty that's good. Incredible. That's all right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, I've got about uh, forty five of the different fifty fifty four quid or something. Probably like, yeah. uh, just about that. Just, yeah. yeah. Um, right. So, since this small batch range came out, it used to have a photo of um, a warehouseman pushing a barrel through the warehouse. It's now evolved to this. I've got about 45 of them. I think there's about 50 out there in the wild. Some are just really tricky to get. There's one for Holland that was just given to like ex Dutch submarine commandos. I don't know any Dutch submarine commandos. If you do, <laughs> if there's anyone uh, listening, please. <laughs> um, that would be incredible. On my list, there was one that came out of China. I bought it in 2020. It only just came to my house this year because it came a very convoluted route via Hong Kong. But that's part of the fun. That's part of the hunt, isn't it? And you like, did someone roll it? Uh, <laughs> no, it just stayed under a friend's bed for a long time before right. to fly back to the UK. Right, right, right. Um, um, no, no. But yeah, so that's uh, that's the small batch. We'll delve into a few more of these. Maybe we go harmony first, and then we can do these as a pairing. Yeah, I'll that's let you. I'll that's take your lead. Your your judgment. So uh, we were talking about the bottle redesign. So this harmony is still in the old style bottle. So that's what it used to look like. Lovely. Um, and I'll put it on the little guitar case. Uh, so cool because at the Malt Music Festival every June, um, there's there's always a lot of music. And the previous two times ago, distillery manager James McTaggart used to have a an awesome band at the festival. Um, he'd get up on stage, he'd do some like Dire Straits covers, things like that. Right. And so it, they were playing heavily on the the musical harmony, but also the harmony of um, bourbon, sherry, and wine casks. So right. this. This is uh, right up Stevie Street. Sherry butt and port pipe. Oh, hello. Ooh. And hence the colour. I mean, yeah. I think you're yeah. speaking to all of us now. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. um, we're going up in ABV to 57.7%. I'm not going to pour a half pint dram for you. Please don't. Yeah, but, so sorry, exclusively sherry and port. Yeah, sherry yeah. butt and port pipe. That's really nice. interesting. When when James was playing, so, thank you. was the money for nothing and were the drinks free? Uh, no, but the... Oh God! Think of another dust rates. Uh, oh, link. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, don't worry. Uh, it'll come to me. <laughs> according to free the mind. Um, Look at that color. Amazing. Thank you. Whoa. Nice. Thanks, Ian. I do love dust rates as well. But now, just want to think about it. Yep. No, I am going to add water to all of mine that are kind of cast strength. Just because. Oh, Where is this sitting? Sorry. 57.7. 57.7. Might do the same. In a minute. This is... I have a feeling as well it's around the 10-year-old mark. Um, it was about 115 quid at the festival. They always sell out at the festival. There's like... Yeah. There was a queue... The first few years I went to the festival, they just did the festival bottling, and there's a great story behind that as well. Oh then when God. they introduced this as a kind of lower price point, people loved it, and every year there's a different colour what's it going to be this year? Is it going to be yellow? Is it going to be right. green party green? Whoever knows. And uh, this year it was this kind of lovely plummy porty purple. So how many releases have they done so far? This is, this is the sixth. So it's been six, six years. Okay. Do you own all six cases? Yeah, yeah. I've, cool. I've, I'm, my kind of buying habit is like buy one to drink, one to keep. Yep. 
I'm not saying the the drinkers are long gone now, but um, <laughs> yeah. this is the active one for this year. Put a little bit of water. That's so lovely. Mm. So oily. Yep. It's like expressed orange peel. Mm. Yeah. And bitters, orange bitters. Orange bitters, yeah. Um, I, surprising orange is coming out. Port, I was thinking, you know, especially the plummy box, I was thinking that was what was going to jump straight out. Mate. Yeah, it's a bit more restrained. It's almost like I'm getting a bit of kind of uh, a red velvet cake. Yes, yes, that's a great shout. Mm. This is why I really like being on this with you guys as well, because a lot of the time in whiskey tastings in warehouses or even in, in shops, you always have people that are a bit nervous to talk about flavors, smells, and tastes. Yeah. But I know you're happy to um, enunciate what you're or vocalize. What I think. You're, what I you're think trying. the issue with that for people is they don't want to sound like an idiot. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, we all sound like. For well, the yeah. irony of it, right? Yeah. This is fifty-something percent whiskey. It's nothing like red velvet cake to most people, right? If you put it in front of a child, they're not going to go, "Oh, it's red velvet cake." <laughs> Fucking hell, it's pain stripper. Yeah. You know? <laughs> We're all a bit weird. So this is the thing. You do. You have to just be confident enough with your own. Just this is what I'm getting. Offer it up. And just because no one else gets it doesn't mean you're wrong, right? Yeah. I think that's the beauty of whiskey. Our olfactory senses, are, you know, our sister is all so different. But at the same time, you're right. When you're in a room and people feel comfortable, it makes you feel more comfortable to pitch in. And then all of a sudden the conversation gets going. What do you get from this then, Jack? I get more of a sherry note on the nose than than port. Okay. Um, and I'll be honest, last year's Harmony, which was in like a kind of a, a coppery brown leather, leather box, um, that's my favourite one of all of them. It smelt and tasted like Bonded Warehouse. Okay. And uh, it was, you sniffed it and it's like, I'm in Warehouse 1 in Loch Granza. And I haven't had that from many of, of, uh, cool. of their drowns. That's very special. But um, but this is still great, and I, I love the effort that goes into it. And um, I know there's a lot of care and attention uh, into the kind of making of this. Yeah, that, I think that's the other thing, isn't it? When it comes to kind of notes like that, the kind of the, the dustiness, the kind of slightly dirty dunnageness of the, that kind of warehouse. People, again, I think they feel a bit awkward saying that because it's like you'll, of course, get someone like, oh, have you ever looked a warehouse? Like. No, but I've sat in one, I've smelled it, and, you know, I think there is an awkward... This is so of those good. ...tasting notes that are a little bit more, yeah. not left left field, but kind of unusual, right? Yeah, I mean, there are special places in life we like to mm -hmm. inhabit, like uh, going into a library. I don't do it as much as I used to, but I love walking into a library and the smell of books around. Yeah. Um, I love the privilege of being able to go into a bonded warehouse and even have a tasting, and it's great. Yeah. Um, because in reality, most of us sit in cars or go on trains or in our spare room working by a laptop and that isn't as evocative and romantic a environment or a smell so when you do go into these special places yeah. and then you tie it to a liquid it's like everything's flowing i think yeah notes to the general public fuck off um <laughs> like everyone if you're on a beach right everyone knows the smell of going to the beach right that kind of sea spray the sea air like the kind of sights the smells that kind of get from it just because you're then having like the kind of sights, the sounds, the smells of a Dunnage warehouse doesn't make that any less legitimate. It's just something that people can't necessarily relate to. Relate to. Yeah. That's all it is, 100%. I agree uh, with that. So, yeah, shouldn't get laughed at for any kind of tasting, though. This is so good. Yeah. Have you added some water? No. I'm I don't add think it a, needs it, personally. I think it needs it. I'm going to add a drop just to. I mean, I, I can see how it might open up certain elements. I'm just really enjoying how oily and thick it is that's so the water so for me nice. really turned it into like soft okay, velvet okay. cloth Ooh, just yeah. a drop you know really soft but you still you, you lose the the punch a little bit obviously um yeah i mean uh, I'm, without pushing the point that's gone from red velvet cake to just pure velvet, velvet in your yeah mouth. yeah I mean, this year I've massively, over summertime, I've massively got into whiskey highballs and unashamedly, I'll go for that more than a G&T now. Yeah. And, and I know that's heavily diluting your whiskey down, but it does open up certain notes that are, are restrained and, and not evident there. But that's how most, if you're like a professional high-end taster that's, you know, writing for whoever magazines or judging competitions especially, they'll water it right the way down to about 20%, right? Yeah. Because it brings up all of the off notes. Exactly that, exactly what you just said. So I find 
a whiskey highball whiskey, if you can find the right whiskey for it, it's almost like proof that it's a high quality whiskey. <laughs> because if you can water it down that much and it still has good Holds flavor. Itself. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's not as easy to do that with some drafts. Yeah. Um, you're right, though. I tell you what, whatever about the palate, the nose is much better with a drop of water. Fruitier. Yeah. It just sinks. Like figs, it starts really oranges. Singing. It was a little bit kind you know, of restrained before, and I was getting loads on the palate. Now, exactly, yeah. Loads of fruits, figs. That's a very good one. Yeah. In the uh, Log Ranter's core range, they have uh, three wine casks every year. They always have enough of them to go at least three quarters of the way through the year. There's an Amarone, a Sautern, and a Port. Normally it's the Amarone which wins, and you know, it's bright red. It's like a uh, shocking red mm -hmm. in color. Yeah. This year it's the Port, which is the really, it must have been super active casks that they used. And I'm wondering if it's the same kind of Port casks that one or maybe two went into this. This is a thousand bottles, so right. Port casks are quite big, aren't they? Port pipes aren't Port pipes, yeah, yeah. 700 yeah. liters in size. Yeah. So um, probably a, a port pipe and a sherry, but uh, yeah, but it's not it's not overly tannic, it's not overly port. And as I said, with a drop of water, actually, what I'm getting a lot on the nose is uh, kind of to your point, Stevie. Like I'm going to sum that up in one word: panettone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Soft, fluffy, fruity. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very fucking good. Yeah. Mm. I think it's rude not to mention the gifts that Jack bought us. I was waiting, but yeah, go on. Um, so I hold up the bottle. Anyone who knows me knows that I love my cider. So Jack very kindly I mean, um, has bought us three large bottles. I'm guessing they're 70, 750. 750. Um, you make your own cider, right? I do. I didn't realize you guys liked cider, so this was a real gamble. I love cider. Yeah, I'm also like, pleased to find paid off. Yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah. Overlap, you know, whiskey and cider. Yeah, here we you go. have uh, you've got friends for life now, mate. Yeah. Um, which have been uh, finished in Aaron casks for, or an Aaron cask for eight months, right? Could you tell us a bit more about this process? Because I, I really want to open this now, but I'm not going to. But yes, yeah. this is um, this one uh, I bought up to the festival this year. So it's a uh, Discovery Apple, that lovely um, mid to early August eating apple you first see kind of at farmers markets and stuff. Got a real uh, strawberry sherbet vibe. It is an eating apple, a dessert apple, but hey, you can make cider with eaters, cookers, cider apples. Um, and last year, remember, it was really hot. Like we had those 40 degree heat days. So the sugar content in those apples was like whew. sky high. Right? Um, okay. And I was very kindly uh, gifted uh, ex San Emilion Aaron whiskey barrel from, uh, from Aaron last year. Not a I bad thought, gift. Yeah. Let's put um, the juice from the discovery into that barrel, see what happens. It was explosive because it was so hot. The The fermentation just was like, it was going wild for the first few weeks. Um, and I bottled it, um, primed it with sugar, took it up to the festival. It's a bit funkier than my normal ciders, um, but I think over time it, it's settling down um, and and I'm increasingly more proud of it. It's like a troublesome child that um, turns good in the end. <laughs> love it. Um, nice. But, um, but I love this link between whiskey and cider, between Aaron and Norfolk, all these different things it's it's great it's kind of um yeah i don't think i've had cider finished in, in a whiskey barrel since uh i think it was rattlers in cornwall i think they do one uh a finish in in whiskey um so i yeah i'm very excited and thank you very generous yeah, yeah. No, thank this you is so cool much. super super cool this is very cool. cool labels as well and the fact that you kind of do this in collaboration with aaron because you were saying this was up at the distillery. Yeah, we kind of served this at their White Stag dinner at the start of the festival. Um, you guys probably can't see the label super clearly at home, but it is a very, very cool little label. And you said your dad does that with you. My dad does that, yeah. I commissioned him for one afternoon to <laughs> take the pen and scribble. Awesome. I love yeah. it. I love it. I paid him in whiskey, I hope. Yeah, he gets paid in as much whiskey, cider or perry as he wants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good man. That's right, because you're you making perry as well. Yeah. Yep, yeah. The Finishing it in... The same cask or? No, I've got a different quarter cask for this year, but Perry is the mysterious cousin to Cider's slightly easier going um, family member. We'll find out. It could all go horribly wrong with the Perry, but uh, okay. watch this space. <laughs> for sure. Um, for sure. Well, shall we move on to the 13 year old French oak and the 15 year old French oak? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, do you want to do the 13 first? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. So we'll do another, it's another small batch. Um, this year, I found a bit of a weird year for Aaron in that normally every year we're kind of sport for choice all throughout the year. 
this year, it was the first half of the year. This was the only bottle that really excited me. This was right. for sale just in La Branza, um, 72 quid. Uh, I was up there the week it came out. I heard the story of the, they'd found these, do I say champagne? Oh, I've said the word. Oh, you said uh, it now. Oh, no. These, these casks from that region. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they'd found these two, two or three that worked really well and they'd bottled it. I thought that's going to sell out straight away. And uh, Perfect. this was around <laughs> April time. And I talk and pour. Whoop, there we go. Um, and then when so I came just back, s- s- share that out, save your. When I came back in in June, there were still bottles in the shop, and I was like, what, "What's going on? This is not a normal year." And anyway, it sold out of the festival, so all was well. Um, they say on here, <clears throat> "Finished in French oak barriques," which is their "Let's not get sued" euphemism for these are casks which had champagne. Wine that goes into making champagne from. The so they don't even say the well the, the region, but it's so sorry that just says uh, French oak barriques. Right, okay. Then, Doesn't so say our our own. You get that on your rare batch. Now I know that's the same type of cast. Right. Um, so I'll go in the region in France where the wood comes from to make the casks that are filled with the grape juice, which makes the wine. God, that was a convoluted. <laughs> um, and then and then lock around to get some of these casks. Um, in the past, as I mentioned earlier on, um, off camera, they were able to release a couple of uh, champagne cask Aaron's, and then they were politely asked to not call it champagne cask. So all of us Aaron Uber fans have, any time we see Argo and mentioned, um, bing, <laughs> kind of think, okay, this is going to be good. And... And this is outstanding. This was my kind of whiskey of the first half of the year. Maybe it's my whiskey of the year. I don't know. Ooh, I tell you what. That's cool. It's a good choice. Is there a reason why they don't use cuvee cask like a bunch of other distilleries do? That seems generic enough for others. So cuvee, like a mixture, a blending, a different mixture of stuff. I'm not really sure. Maybe uh, barrique is more specific to the cask shape. I don't know. The I don't know. No. Um, just to kind of differentiate themselves a bit from, are you thinking of like Brookvaddy and stuff? Brookvaddy have done that, Glen Allocky have done that. You've got Glenfiddich, the Glenfiddich. Glenfiddich, yeah, the Grand Cuvée. Maybe they're all just trying to find a way to not get sued by the Champagne region and whatever works for them, exactly. let's go with it. Yeah. Um, if I was going to release a Champagne, I'd call it the Champ. <laughs> the Champ. <laughs> the Champ. champ. I was like, yeah. Just the Champ. The Champ Champ. <laughs> Easy. This is, I can't. This is lovely. I don't know which is better than this one or the last one. Now, I'm, it's similar to when Chimmer came. As opposed to doing what I was supposed to do, I started trying to guess and ranking them all against each other before we even got anywhere. I'm now playing my own little game in my head, trying to figure out which one I like best and all of this. It's going to get harder and harder. It's going to get very yeah. difficult as we progress, man. You- this is interesting. So, sorry, did you say it had an age statement? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. So, 13 years old. This is 13. Okay, and, cool. And uh, this is one of their rare, rarer batches. Uh, this is batches. just a small batch, which small is batches. the lesser cousin of the rare batch, but I feel is in the same, same uh, vein. field. Yeah, same for big, sure. Um, yeah. um, and so, you think about winemaking. When they're making the wine which goes into champagne, it's not sparkly in the cask. You, you're not pressurizing these barrels and making it sparkly. So the barrels themselves have red or white wine in, but it's still. Now, a few years ago when we were tasting previous kind of champagne casks, everyone said, I'm getting these notes of like sparkly ones. Like, you're not getting sparkly ones. No. <laughs> Maybe if you are, that's fine, as we said. Yeah, but um, I think it's more like, it's just very cool that you can get some barrels from that area um, and... But again, I think that, you know, as you just kind of hit on with your cider, isn't it so lovely that Aaron are open to sharing their casks with you and allowing you to do something quite cool, as France did with them, saying the million wine casks, you know, these are being passed around. Now, I think it would be so much better if we can start working together with different regions, with different producers. We already do to a large extent, but I feel that when it comes to the wine game, some of the producers, and in fairness, wine's been going on, you know, at, at a large scale for longer than whiskey, certainly on a more sort of uh, public scale. Um, so some of their brands are arguably bigger or need more protecting or whatever. But I just think that provenance is so important. And the clarity, like you say, you know, well, why is it that I'm not getting sparkling wine? Well, actually, because this is how they make champagne. Let us explain to you. We've got somebody from the fucking vineyard where these casks came from, and they're going to tell you their story. All of a sudden, 
the knowledge is there for everyone on every fucking level. And I think that that's one of the issues that I certainly see in dealing with casks that come from France or that come from specific producers. Sometimes they're a little bit too like, oh, no, we need to be really careful in protecting ourselves. Whereas actually, I think it would do them a lot more favors to actually just reach out to the person that they're selling the cask to. Let's collaborate. Let's make sure that the end consumer is getting all the right information. Because I think what you'd end up getting is whiskey drinkers who then go, fuck, this wine cask is good. Let me try some wine. I don't know anything about wine. And then all of a sudden, you've got a new customer from an old cask. Do you know what I mean? Like, but Especially in this instance, though, you have a barrier, and that's the SWA, right? Because they they would want to share that knowledge, but they can't. It's the, who, sorry, who are you saying? Sorry, with something like the the champagne barrels here, right? Right. They can't denote that. They can't go into detail. That's, what does the SWA that's the produce? Is not the SWA. SWA does not. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the it was the SWA there. would want you to give more right or more, more provenance. So the producer doesn't. The okay, producer. got it. Sorry, I thought it was the other way around. And again, it kind of works because you get like you don't really deal with the chateaus who then sell their casks. Sometimes you will, and if you're a distillery, maybe you will. But often you're dealing with brokers of casks, right? Why do you think they're, like, holding back that information then? Brand protection. Right. So Completely they brand protection. It's the same as why as me as an independent bottler, why can I not buy casks of Glenfiddich and bottle it as Glenfiddich? Right, yeah. Because William Grant want to protect their brand. Yeah. So they'll sell... Well, Just in case you do anything yeah, damaging to the liquid. Correct, it, correct. A bad but that's the thing. It. If you're going to work closely alongside someone, yes. collaborate, yeah, make sure yeah, that yeah. it works, you know? And like I say, you know, Jack's not some big cider producer, but Aaron have been open to a, an idea. And how fucking cool is this? Yeah. And now all of a sudden, we are all a little bit more passionate, even if just minutely, <laughs> not only about Jack, but about Aaron, because they fucking let him do this. You'll be That's way more cool. passionate once you've done that bottle, mate. No, <laughs> trust me, I'm beyond excited. But yeah, anyway, sorry, you could ramble on, on and on and on about this. What do we think of the dram? Because this is delicious. You could carve this with a knife. It's thick. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. It's up at what, 56? 54.4. Uh, 54.4. And so it's European oak. Uh, French wine casks are always uh, it's tighter grain, isn't it? So there's less evaporation, less angel share. Mm -hmm. The ABV stays up higher, even longer into maturation. Um, Just beautiful uh, tannins. Really, yeah. really well integrated tannins. Um, it's, to me, it's kind of like a big, kind of nutty, thick, sticky grape juice. Not kind of a sherry. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I'm not getting heaps of nuts. You say nutty, like maybe small elements, but that's interesting. It's just incredibly well-rounded, very, very... Nutty, like you get off walnut skin. Not like hazelnut, but like that slightly um, sharper, slightly acidic. Yeah, not nutty. creamy, but more of a, a, sh a shell yeah. kind of. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now okay. I'm... I'm, I've led the first couple, but I'm very excited for the next one because, you know, I say I, well, I collect the small batch, but the rare batch has been the rabbit hole. I didn't want to go down, and then I went down it, and I haven't got these ones yet. So I've never tried this, but... Uh, it could be an expensive afternoon for both of you then. <laughs> I'm actually... There's actually two of those on Scotch Whiskey Auctions right now, finishing this Sunday. I so, what, you uh, two need to be in contact with I each other so. moving forward, otherwise you'll end I think up just so. not bidding. Because I have been bidding on a lot of Aaron recently. Uh, yeah, listen, I, I don't have the wealth of knowledge that, that Jack does. I am very passionate, and I'm, I'm loving learning more today like this is this is awesome um but yeah the story behind this really um i went up to the dram house um aka milroy's um i think it was just after the pandemic or sometime we went up there and um what's his name was working there not uh andrea eduardo eduardo good eduardo who lo no longer is there and obviously they have what Two, three, four hundred whiskies on that bar? Yeah. No, they have over a thousand in the building. In the building, yes. Oh, but on that, that, in the dram bar. Good anyway, a lot. A lot. And I said, it's not there anymore. Pick though. me something, mate. No, pick me something that you've really enjoyed recently. Right. And he pulled down this uh, 15 year old French oak. Um, Red Batch Aaron and I just fed in love with it. And ever since I've been I've been chasing this bottle, but I've also been buying 
You were with me. Okay. I'm, you may have tried it. I think I tried to get your attention. I, I was like, you, Jake, you try this, mate. And you were like, I was, I I was busy doing, with someone. What do you know, mate? You know? <laughs> what do you fucking I didn't know? say that. I did not say that. <laughs> I was busy with someone and I remember you being like, oh my God. I fell in love. It was another um, Port Charlotte, you know. The Von Ramaday one. It, yeah, that, it was another one of those moments where I was like, oh my God, I love those moments. So I haven't had it since. I had it twice, I think, there that day. Uh, I got him to pour me. No, we went up again, and he, he had like a thimble left in the in the bottle. Anyway, been chasing it ever since. Uh, finally got it. W- have put in some silly bids in the past for it, and luckily, and with it, what you paid? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think I won this for I think 110 quid, which what? I think is lower than That's retail. Lower than RV. Yep, yep. In fairness, he spent a minute looking for the. I've night, been so. every yeah. month. Every month I've been going for it, so I was quite pleased there. Um, but yeah, you know, I've had the core range. I've obviously had some some indies, and as I say, it's it's it, as Jake says, you know, it's so robust. It always works well, and it never disappoints. So anyway, enough of that. Um, get it, me glass. Just get it popped open, and uh, just pass it around, mate. I, I mean, I'm happy to come the hundred miles down from Norfolk just to try this. It's All right, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm really interested now to see how you know, because obviously that probably is. So you said very it's close miles. Hundred miles. It's actually. Yeah. He's yeah. travelled a fair old way today, mate. Like with a, with a fair bit of weight. Yeah, mate. You must walking. have had about thirty kilos. <laughs> Or something with all these well, bottles inside a, a swim or a gym yesterday, so I had to do some kind of work before coming to drink some whiskey. And you walked here from the station as well, didn't you? Yeah. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Anyway, no, so you thank you for cracking. Enjoy. So enjoy. No, please. And so, sorry, 15 year old, rare batch. What's the strength? I didn't look. Uh, 53.5%. Okay, so not far off, actually. Not far at all. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Consistency with those casks, they're kind of keeping the ABV. Oh, wow. Well, you, um, this is this is more fruity for me straight away on the nose. It's like much. Yeah, really, so I remember really it. singing fruits. I was expecting loads of fruit off of the thirteen because this is why I remember that. Right, yeah. like really fruity. Uh, so it's very different. Um, texture, flavor, mm. like what's interesting actually off of both of them, I get this kind of rubbery, rubber balloon smell straight away on the nose. That's really interesting. I got it off the 13. I've been getting this, yeah, slightly. The first one was the most, but even the second one, not so much that last, the small batch, but the second one, that perfume thing was there again. Right. Maybe it's the spirit. Is that a. No, that I'm, a not, I'm not. I've not had that from Aaron ever, really. Right. Think. Maybe it's just an off day for me. I don't know. This one, though, straight away on the nose for me, it's like strawberries, but mm. those really fresh. Did you ever put pepper on your strawberries as a kid? I have, not as a kid. Yeah. No? Did you put sugar on your strawberries? You're a fiend. You're disgusting. <laughs> Fuck you. Balsamic vinegar? <laughs> what? Yep. On your strawberries? Yep. In fairness, sorry. I'm I not have heard that before. You must have had like a, like, like a, a, uh, like a, like a uh, green leaf salad with strawberries and yeah. balsamic glaze. Okay. No. Nah. <laughs> strawberries right, and I a salad. I thought you joking. Is that a fruit salad? Nope. Then get out. No, I, <laughs> I, I, no I'm with Stevie now. I thought, for, I thought for a second you were... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought for a second you were dribbling a bit of salt like sarsens, like <laughs> strawberries. Like, mm. No, Jesus, that'd be horrible. No, pepper on your strawberries. You must have done this before, Jack. I have not peppered my strawberries, but I will be peppering my strawberries. <laughs> you should. You should. I, he's a cider maker. I thought he's in touch with his foods, man. I thought he'd know. Pepper on your strawberries enhances the flavour, right? So sugar is just... But I know what you mean. You're, talk, you're saying like kind of making your strawberries sweeter. You under, want to put pepper on them; it's much better for you. Is what I'm saying. Under ripened strawberries. Is that what you were kind of alluding to here? No, not under ripened. Like super, super fresh, sweet. But okay. the added pepper that just makes them pop. That that's what I immediately got. It reminded me of summer as a child. I was just enjoying seeing the triangulation of like you were suddenly all three. Extremely in tune, just like zing, 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 zing. Strawberries, strawberries, strawberries. Um, I'm getting, uh, yeah, a real jammy note on this. That I agree, it's um, jam. It's, cool. uh, it's way fruitier than than the 13 year old small batch. Hey, so maybe it does justify that extra two years in the cask, that extra price point. I can't argue with it. it um, and sorry, what did the 13 retailer? It was about it was 18 pounds, 72 quid, 72 yeah. quid. Okay, and this was, I think, one twenty one thirty retail, yeah. something like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. But I, I couldn't get my hand on the rare batches by the point that I decided to start going with them. They did, they did go quite quick. Mm-hmm. 
then they're spread all across the world, whereas this was only like Ranza, but like that's well, yeah. a hard bottle to get. Are they numbered, are they? The um, uh, small batch. They kind of are, if you know where to look. Did they start doing on this one? Because this is one of 3060s. So it's all here we go. such smooth drinking. Yeah. I don't know. You're not going to be able to see it on the camera, but they now batch number all barcode the bottles. In, yeah, kind of laser etch. Yeah, yeah, including the, okay. the boring, so you can actually find out what year your 25 year old is or yep. everything. So that's kind of cool. Well, this is just how I remember it. And I can't wait to get home and. Finish the rest of the bottle. Just <laughs> yeah. start drinking. Uh, this is really, really good. Just they're both. It's all so quaffable. It's all just lovely. Quaffable, it like that. It is really, really well. This one, you said velvety last time. This is like silky. Sorry, I know I'm not really helping with flavor notes there, but it's just so easy. Yeah, and I'm comparing it still. I've got a bit of the thirteen. I don't know which one I prefer. It's I they're mean, both very different. Yeah. But there's a huge similarity, obviously. It's just... I think the reason why you say silky is because it, texture-wise, is much lighter in the mouth. Which right. is not to say it's thin. No. It's a little bit less mouth coating. But the flavour is the flavor almost is... turned up a level. Yeah. It's kind of a bit weird. Yes, that's a... Well, thank you, Ian. There we go. This is why we've got Ian here. He clearly explains what I'm fumbling over. <laughs> it's really good, though, right? Yes. Very cool. Um, and for 15 years old, I would actually say both of these last ones above their ages. I would say this last one that you gave me, the 13, is tasting like an 18. And this one, 18, 20. Yeah. Easy, right? Yeah. If you compare it to, like, other brands. Oh, for sure. And at 50, 53, 54, 55%, this is where... The, you don't, it doesn't even touch you, right? It doesn't even tickle you, though. Know? There's this kind of like sweet bitterness at the end as well. Almost like a like a grapefruit type note. Yeah. I, I mean, the whole thing with this is very like the... I love the, the kind of metallic part of the packaging as well. Probably not the most sustainable. Seriously heavy... Well, there's some plastic. Sorry, we, in we haven't spoken about the packaging on camera, have we? I don't. We're, no, we haven't. Really... Yeah, this packaging. Oh well, just in general. I mean, we were talking about it at the beginning, but yeah, this this one is. Uh... Yeah, you're not keen on this, are you? Yeah. It's kind of puzzle lock type thing. It's However, just kind of half there. Jack has pointed out that there is a hole that has been uh, bored out for a glenkhan. Yeah, plastic, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, is that what it's for? I think it's. To stop the bottle wobbling, but you can put your glass in. Yeah, yeah glass yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And it's like got that. this kind of nice, uh, like vacuum seal, like. So I like that. You know, I just don't like the separation between the wood and the the plastic. Okay, feels weird. Okay, yeah. I'll give you an email to complain. Please, you do. can write in. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I think I would be so overly delighted having bought the first one it at retail up, sure. and I would we'll be have a look at it. <laughs> happy with this one. I would be very, I would not that I would be in any way disappointed. I'd be happy with it, but 120 pounds retail. Yeah. 120, 130, I think. Okay. I don't really see pounds, it. 120 pounds, 130 pounds retail. I would be happy with that. I would be ecstatic with the small batch 13 year old. For 70, for 70, 70. Yeah. I would just be like, and Two, both three. really, really good. Like I'm not taking anything away from that. In fact, you know, there's the argument which one I prefer, but the value. Considering it's nearly double the price, I would just be ecstatic to have got that small batch thirteen. Yeah, I, you know, I for me, I think I'm leaning towards the thirteen. It's pretty close. Just on the on the mouthfeel, it's it's rare that you get something so rich and thick and viscous. And so just for the kind of um, uniqueness of of that, plus the price of, for sure, seventy five eighty quid. Like you cannot is, go wrong. Nothing to complain about. <clears throat> yeah, I'll definitely be looking out for those on the auctions. Now, I mean, there's always a smattering of them uh, coming up, and there's a steady stream of them being released all around the world. And right. if if that is your fancy, if you want to start trawling Japanese auction sites for Japanese exclusives, we'll get to one of them in a bit. Then I'll have That's to it. compete with you. Yeah. Uh, no, no, there's there's, a, there's enough of them out there, and I think sure. um, the air miles might be terrible, but the, the sense of, like, it started in Scotland, it went to Japan, it's come back to England. Um, it's it's the fun. best travelled collection of whiskies out there, probably, <laughs> is yours, Jack. Yeah. Um, Fair play. What do you want to go into next, Fisherman? Do you want to do another one of... Yours, Stevie, or do you want to do White Stag? Uh, whatever, you... you, you uh, do you want to speak back to Sherry? 
Yes. Sherry time. Sherry baby. Um, mm. As I'm turning into a kind of sauna version of myself. So, White Stag. Uh, it's, uh, I'm sure other distillers have these. It's kind of like their internal club. You know, they're kind of super fans. There's a Facebook group. Initially, the first five releases were picked by Aaron fans as well. You used to get your name on the box. Uh, it used to be a black box with a, a white image of a stag that looked really perturbed in various states of shock, like, oh, I'm about to get shot. It's rutting season. Uh, and then that stag has now disappeared and become this kind of like... Um, majestic. Majestic yeah. stag. I will live forever stag. Yeah. No. A bit Wicker Man as well. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I really like the, the illustrations. We've met the Wicker Man, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's 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 a true story. That's a scary <laughs> fucking story. Rather not revisit that chapter of our lives. Oh, I like that. It's black. That's uh, cool. So yeah, it's the same bottle as that, but it's the that's black, cool. Uh, slightly more. I guess it looks more premium or looks just a bit different. Like it's different. Yeah. Thing itself. Uh, two X Oloroso Sherry Punchins. Uh, this is this one was picked by their current distillery manager. A uh, really lovely chap called Stuart Bowman. He used to work for Brewer. Uh, before that, Brewdog a bit. He's now in lockdown, so he's the perfect fit. He, uh, in much the same as your your good self, he has a fantastic beard, oh, a I'll really friendly that. personality. He gels well with the team. He has a very good taste and a good way of describing things. I'm looking forward to trying this then. Bring it out. So sorry, non-age statement? Uh, is it? Non-age statement on here. I think we found out what it was and it's gone from my mind i think over 10 years old cool oh, it doesn't matter i'm just yeah, interested i i'm, I'm just pretty i'm pretty sure it, 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 it says the ages of the cask on the website somewhere but okay. just not actually on the packaging it's not what's important to the core fans right because it's all about the liquid so and it is 53.4 percent 995 bottles so two to sherry oloroso punches that works yeah um i think it was around Thank you, sir. 135 145 that's plenty. Oh, Thank sorry. you very much. Um, in previous years, maybe in cheaper times. Oh, you mind, um, oh, 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 last in the same week. Oh, 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 oh. And you're a Sherry fan, right? Uh, in previous years, they there were some quite old uh, expressions for the White Stag. I think we got up to a 20 year old plus. Mm -hmm. But um, things get more expensive. Um, but also, when it's this fucking good, why do you need it to be? You know. It's nice, don't get me wrong. I like trying stuff of all ages and all, but I think if you're a committee member or a White Stag member or whatever, you know, every distillery has their own thing, right? It, it can't always be about the age or the... Sometimes it's like, try this. It's nowhere near finished, but it's fucking cool and you need to try it. It's five. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kick that out the door. I think that that's what... Well, so, it's certainly what I want. You know, as a whiskey enthusiast, if I'm following these different distilleries, it's what I love about the Springman Committee. You know, um, did you guys get the the Hazelberg Port earlier? Did we? Oh, forget. Fuck. <laughs> ah, no. ah, ah, you got ah, three days. Ah, 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 oh, oh, are you getting upset? You're <laughs> sorry, mate. You lay out on the phone. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Well, have you entered the ballot? Of course I did, yeah, right? Of course, man. Jackie, are you a part of the Springman? I'm not. But I did see that FOMO come up in your eyes there, and it, yeah, it was a beautiful. That was feeling. another Chema panic moment when he. I thought he duped me with Bamore anyway. Um, <laughs> so you still got time. Uh, I've got three days apparently. Plenty of yeah. time. I don't know what the panic. Yeah, is. seriously. <laughs> that's <laughs> like I thought that you were going to literally run out of the studio. <laughs> well, my face is ready to Campbell down. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I missed the fella. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think you're all right, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> So, this is sensational. You said on a rosso, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So what you were saying nuts earlier, I'm guessing heavy, heavy nuttiness on the fucking front end of this. And it's beautiful and it's sweet and it's... Yeah. Oh, my the, God. The previous one was kind of like a... You, know, you get on like a light sherry, like on a pheno or something, you get kind of like a, just a, a hint of nuttiness to it. Like, it, not in the traditional sense. This mm. is... Full on kind of this is Oloroso, baby. Christmas Eve. Like that Christmas, is Christmas, Christmas cake. nut selection. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Christmas nut selection. Guys, there we go. If we're talking about Christmas cakey whiskeys all the time, I feel it becomes a bit boring. That's a fantastic tasting note. And guys, it's coming up to Christmas now. So when you're drinking these sherry whiskeys, look out for the Christmas nut selection. Throw it in there as a good tasting note. I like that. That's fucking cool. Christmas nuts. Christmas nuts, maraschino cherries on the nose for me. Yes. 
but yumminess throughout. Was anyone making a Christmas cake this year? Have you started? Because now would be the time. Oh my god! I the, last weekend I was at a mate's house, Seb, and he is he's he's made a start on his Christmas cake. He has been injecting it with <laughs> rum, whiskey. Well, he's like, mixing. I think so. I, I don't, goodness knows, but he bold. He brought it out just so we could have a whiff of it. No, and like it's. Knock your fucking head off, was it? <laughs> and it's so dense, like you could do, you could lift weights with that thing. For sure, it's, right, 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 it's right, mad, right. No, it's incredible. Right. Like when people do that, it's it's awesome. Like you know, good on him. I haven't done that for a minute. You know, uh, me and my mum, we used to make Christmas cake every single year. It's how like you made one on camera. You made one for the people. We did. One That's year. not still up, is it, though? Uh, you may have been in it. I don't know. I don't know. Probably. And then when it comes to the big day, you get that stodgy, dense cake, and you put a slab of really mature cheddar on it as well. And you're like, no, who else did this? Yes. Who was cheddar. it? There was someone else that does oh, this. Oh, my God. I told I see you your pepper strawberry, and I give you <laughs> cheddar. It's a Christmas cake. <laughs> nah. Top trunk. Oh, my God. That's wrong. Oh. So I would... I'll tell you something like, disgusting I do because you've told me something fucking disgusting that you do. That's very strange. Cheddar on cake. I would <laughs> pan fry my Christmas cake in butter the day after. <laughs> my face is like on the same as the cheese. That's like a fucking heart attack. This okay? is a public health warning. But it's going yummy. Out right <laughs> it's yummy. Oh my God, it's so yummy. It's so good. It's not necessary, but it's so good. Don't knock the it, I guess. The cheese sounds... It really, it, it's strange, but it really works. Strange. I don't think I'll try it. I'm not going to have a bit of marzipan, a bit of icing, and maybe a bit of Morello cherry jam in the middle of it or something. Seriously, it's butter and cheese malarkey. Oh, oh, sorry. No, the day of, you eat it as a normal cake. Oh, oh but it's oh, day oh. after stuff. It's day after. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's Boxing Day. Everyone's feeling a bit dirty. <laughs> don't look at me. I'm cooking my Christmas cake in butter. Do you know what I mean? That's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> This anyway, is back to the fucking whiskey. So, yeah, yeah. Chat and shite, yeah. Chat and shite. This is yummy. I don't know if this is my favourite yet. But I love that it has led us to talk about frying up Christmas cake. I know, right? It can really... Li whiskey leads you down the garden path. Right? And it's funny when you start talking about things, how it kind of um, like leads you or anchors you into a tasting note. Mm. Like... Now we've been talking about that Buster's Christmas cake. Like I'm getting a slight hint of like burned Buster to it, which I wasn't before. <laughs> like yeah, that's. I'm sure that'll go like one placebo that, effect. Total placebo, yeah. For sure, for sure. But that's what's so exciting about trying whiskeys together. And I think that there's something to be said for stretching yourself because, like you say, sometimes you can get anchored in it. But then, depending on who you're with and your ability to talk through that, you can move past it. You can, you know, yeah, for sure. This is really really good though i think this might be my favorite thus far it's delicious it's so sweet like it's the sort of whiskey though that i would pick straight away as my favorite so far like you jake but i know after three four of them it would start to get a bit sickly for me right. mm. and i get that with kind of like oloroso sherried whiskeys like i like i'll be like it's like a bag of sweets you're like oh this is delicious and you feel sick afterwards right Okay. That is that in, in a bottle for okay. me. Okay. Um, I don't get that. Yummy. Mm. No. I have no, yeah. No. Well, there's you with Bean the five sugar. twelves over here. <laughs> We're sorry? There's you with your sugar fiend and him with his five twelves over here. He doesn't get sick after too much sugar, so. Five twelves? No. Yeah. I think I went through five twelves like one session. Yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah. didn't even know it's my head. It's like, oh, it's twelves. It's my twelves. It's my and I know that because I came in to clear up the next day and the fucking <laughs> rappers down here. <laughs> Rappers oh, over there. <laughs> Ian's just like remnants of his junky phase of just going <laughs> through twelve. Coke, and it's just like, Jesus, oh, I'm not judging you, but I see that's totally, the difference. Like, my sweet tooth, like step on my shame. I could drink this sort of sweetness all day long, but I couldn't have more than a sip of can of Coke without recalling in fear. Do you know, and that's the difference. My sweet tooth is very particular, very very particular. But yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't have that problem. I can drink. I'm not going to say a bottle of this. That's not a responsible way to drink. I could drink I too could, much of this without it becoming overly sweet. You'd need a. You could happily do this. The with alcohol a straw would get in the way before the sweet or a spoon the way, right? with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah a spoon. <laughs> I mean, I've had this since well, last year, and it's kind of worked its way back on the whiskey cabinet. Yeah, but that's a good thing. You know, some some of the time you get those bottles that this now sits next to. I mean, I don't just have Aaron. I've got some Ardbeg. I've got some Brooklady 
on the shelf. And this is back next to the uh, Ardberg Hypernova, which is fine. Okay. It's there, but okay. like, it's not an everyday dram, is for it? For sure, for sure, um, for sure. But the great thing about that is then it kind of gets preserved for a few more years and like you can bring out and... And on yeah. that note, actually, Jack, because you've got such a, you know, <laughs> eclectic collection here, how does the Aaron open in the bottle it, do you ever find that the net pour is very much different to if you've let it breathe so there are some whiskies that i struggle with in that point of view and i will be very particular about how i drink them how i open them etc who i share them with at different stages i was really conscious of that with the 13 year old french oak compared to the 15 i know we're just opening that but that was brilliant um the the first one we started on the german uh, bourbon cherry I'd opened that three days ago, but I enjoyed it so much. I thought I'll bring it along. I think it works well. Okay. But um, I haven't noticed it loses itself if uh, you leave it for a year or two. Okay. Um, That's great. Whether the bottles last a year or two, but even, you know, th this has been open a year um, and it's still tasting great. Yeah. So, um, Sensational. But, but there is something about that when you first open it, isn't there? But um, Well, sometimes, I for some, some whiskeys, I don't find it so much with. Like your one that you've just opened, Who's to say? I haven't tried that one before. Maybe you gave me a sup on the the one at Milroy's. I don't think nah, so. No, you, yeah. I pardon you off. Did I? I was, being, <laughs> I was being bold. Okay, I'm sorry, Stevie. But like, I don't. I think that opened really nicely. Yes. And that was kind of the I part agree. of the question, right? It's interesting to see how that's just been freshly opened. Gave us a lot. You're saying this has been open for a year plus, and it's giving us a lot. So it's there are some whiskies to me that it doesn't really matter how you drink them, when it's opened, whatever, get it in the glass and it's always good. Um, do you think that this is maybe one of those or? I think maybe more so that it's a sherry cask. It can, right. it can kind of last. I'd, okay, okay, okay. Maybe okay. bourbon, why I like bourbon barrel whiskeys is there's a, a slight fragility, a slight higher note to them that I still think it lasts, it survives. I mean, we're going to go into a peated bourbon in a couple of, we're about the halfway mark now. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> the marathon of Aaron. I love it. Let's keep cracking. Yeah. Let's keep cracking. Yeah. I'm excited. Stevie, do you want to do your fisherman's retreat? Yeah. If this you is yeah, a yeah, good even. one. So this did you try this? Such a good one. What do you mean, did I try? We were on the tasting with them recently. No, I know, but I remember you kind of was in and out. I think some food I was in and out. Yeah, I wasn't aware of what I was tasting at every point, but, but I tried this and everything. it was one of the standouts. So the way you I, say you're in and out and weren't aware of what you were tasting is like you were in some <laughs> like drug addle. No, <laughs> <Like, laughs> it was a Zoom tasting. I had work you to do. Say all right, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> in and out of consciousness, <laughs> aware of what was being drunk, <laughs> just constantly with a whiskey going down my neck. No. <laughs> No, there were no I had work to do. I couldn't listen. I tell you what, the guys behind this brand are fucking cool. And we were at this tasting with them. It was a father and son. Facebook Live? Instagram yep. Live? Yep. 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 Facebook. It took me a minute to get on for the bloody thing because I'm technologically challenged. But I think similar to us, they just chat their shite Possibly. they have their own little thing they're a father and son duo they've got a, a beautiful pub that they're based out of and a really beautiful settings a very interesting cardboard cut out as well behind the bar what's that you know the oh, i don't remember that <laughs> yeah you do uh, do i yeah it was like the german uh, the uh like uh, oh, the bavarian something Oktoberfest. Woman right, with the right, jugs. Right, right. <laughs> Cardboard cut out. Well, you were focusing Careful. on the wrong thing. I was focusing on the whiskey. Thank you, Jim. How dare you. But, um, but yeah, they were really, really cool, though. And I'll I tell you what, I, what I love about them is similar to us, they're kind of raw unrefined passion yeah they're not trying to be perfect they're this not trying to you know pretend to be something that they're not they have some really really amazing whiskies though they are so passionate about them and the way they shared those with us that evening i was i was okay i do remember that looks like a so, fest exactly probably can't say that anyway <laughs> we digress getting caught up in the wrong things here but my point being that yeah with this brand i i i love it I think all of the whiskeys out of it are phenomenal thus far. This yeah, so out of the lineup, uh, we had five, I believe, four or five. Um, five, pretty sure. No, yeah. four because I was missing one night. Only three turned up, and they very kindly sent me an extra one in time for the Thank tasting. You. Anyway, out of all of them, this is the one I bought. This was a standout, and it was ten pounds off every bottle that day or this night. Was or a standout. It was. It really was. There was a few others there, but this was. Ugh. And then I learned it was Aaron because I think that's they didn't really tell you. They didn't really tell you before. They kind of let you have a sip, and then they got into it, and you're like, "Fuck again, Aaron." Mm. Does yep. it pulls it out of the hat again? Yeah. 
so it, it was a criticism in the earlier years about the the range of um wine casks that they used and it was it was kind of purely because they were trying to get affordable casks because at a time when cash flow wasn't as easy for the company so the the first distillery manager gordon mitchell 95 to 2007 he's responsible for a lot of the what we now see as the 20 year old plus whiskies but if you were to buy an aaron back in the early noughties and then what a wine finish one he was the guy that went out and found these wine barrels. Yep. James from Tagger then came in from 2007 up to the quality of casks yep. that were bought in. On the shelf, um, I think I've had a previous one of um, Fisherman's Retreat, your lumber red wine cask. They've got quite a few Aaron casks yeah. from what I understand, um, from what they were sort of alluding to there, yeah. yeah. I'm getting like a Calvados note on it, and I don't know where your lumber is from. Um, was it Australian or South African? It's a new world wine. New world wine. Okay. It's new world. South African. I want South to say. African. Want it's definitely to say. a new world wine. I remember that, but I had never heard of Yolumba myself, and I, yeah, it was one of the things that intrigued me. That's interesting. Calvados. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like if if I could describe the color of the smell, it's green. Say yeah, South Africa. South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greeny yellow, but um, yeah, I'd be more on the yellow there, almost a straw element yeah. on the on the nose i know that for a fact it doesn't taste anything like that on the palate but there's an element of maybe the yellowness on the on the nose um even on the palate i don't know it's a bit of um sorry steve what was the age 10 i think uh is it 10 i think so i think it edition is. 10 no oh. edition 10 i think it's eight years isn't it eight or nine then yeah maybe nine there we go okay edition 10 nine years old 50 percent um, this is the flat 50, is it? Because this is the thing. They do really cool. At they do a car strength. Treat. They'd normally bottle something at 60.4. Oh, right. Okay. I got, yeah, the, no, I got the car strength. 60.4. Yeah, I haven't so put it in my mouth yet. One, yeah. okay. It doesn't taste it though, does it? Um, the... Yeah, I think that kind of yellow, kind of orange kind of does continue on to the palate. A bit of kind of... Um, do like, you get that bit? Okay. Kind of melon. Quince. Skin, kind of qu yeah, quince. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, I was not expecting that on the palate from the nose. Melon skin. Mm. You're very good with some of your taste in that as well. I wouldn't have picked that out myself. Yeah, you know, when you learn, like scoop a bit of the, like scoop a bit too deep. I know exactly melon. what you're saying. Yeah, as soon as you said it, I was, I'm with you. Scoop a bit too deep. Wow. You going to the rind? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? wrong nothing mate i'm shaking your head yeah he's asking you a question mate. yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're going to the rind you know yeah, yeah, yeah. that bitterness yeah where you the, find the you've got, just got like a load of seeds in your hand no sorry let's not go down this route yeah <laughs> <It's too whiskey. laughs> i mean yeah. it's, it's great isn't it and it, it kind of shows uh for everyone that just goes bourbon or sherry in whiskey it shows the range of versatility of what a distillery can do with other wine casts yep Yep, um, yep, 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 yep. I could completely agree with that. For me, since I got involved within whiskey, I've always loved wine cask maturation, particularly with peated trams. But I find that it's such an interesting, and because there's so many flavors within wine, there's so much diversity within how it can affect a whiskey. Um, but I think you're exactly right that playing around with that from distilleries is not done enough. There are very, very few that will actually dip their toes properly. Do you think that taboo has gone from the industry now? Is it accepted that distilleries have to buy wine casks? Yeah, I don't think it's a taboo anymore. I just don't think people are doing it to the level that they should. Uh, you look at distilleries like Bricladi when they are looking at provenance, they are doing their best. And that's all from the kind of Mark Rainier age of like bringing wine contacts in right and like i said earlier that's what i feel whiskey needs more of more collaboration synergy across the board provenance is everything and if 60 to 80 percent of the flavor of a whiskey is coming from the cask we need to know more about that cask what bodega is it from what type of sherry held it? What chateau? You know, what what are they doing with their wine? We talked about this recently with rum. It's always just rum cask. Okay. What sort of fucking rum? <laughs> Tell us, you know. How is this rum made? What sort of flavors am I was, looking was for? Was it tropical matured? Was it? Like and, and, and equally from there, like we said earlier, all of a sudden you're converting whiskey drinkers to rum drinkers, whiskey drinkers 
to wine drinkers and and vis-a-vis -vis, right the wine drinkers oh well actually you should try this because it's got blah 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 oh fucking yeah. hell, that's really nice well, i you mean know? As it well. just doesn't happen enough but you're right jack it's not a taboo anymore and that's great we just need to now make it mainstream <laughs> and excite you know i think people are excited about knowledge it's just provenance getting in the way particularly after a year like last year where all of the big boys came back online and were buying casks again. And then all of the smaller independent producers, of which Aaron is one, were something like, oh, where do we go to buy our casks? What can we get? That's not going to just be an isolated incident. That's going to happen every five, ten years. Definitely. So, I mean, but they're, they're never limiting themselves on the casks they buy there. For sure. They're open to different styles from all around the world. Uh, but like you say, they have to be because they're a little bit that much more independent. And that will actually, in my opinion sing through for them in value in the long run because they're being experimental right uh, i think that that's you can't you can't really challenge that this is delicious though it is it's got quite a uh this is kind of like a heatheriness type uh herby yeah kind of note in there as well that takes over at the back what are we doing next Let's finish on our last unpeated one, which is this year's festival cask. Awesome. Um, and then we'll we'll go. No, no, we'll still stay after that. We'll still stay in the north, but we'll do a petered lock round after that. But so, uh, uh, and this festival is different to the music festival, this or is one of the same festival, but this one is the second. festival cask. That's the harmony bottling. So this is a single cask that comes out every year, picked by people that go to the festival. Um, in the ultimate masterclass, of which you were one. I always try and get on that masterclass. It's so good. You you either you're either in there with the distillery manager or the MD. You're normally in a really nice warehouse. You have a astounding selection of drams. In 2019 and in 2017, we were privileged to try uh, a dram from cast number one, a Lock Ranza. Dad's. They just put it out the end of it. Awesome. Like, we're not wow. going to bottle it, but here, and it looked like Coke. It was like the darkest. Cool. I think a heavily sherried uh, barrel, but um, you get your money's worth, not only in yeah. trying it, but then in having your name on the bottle. Yeah, incredible. I don't know where I'm holding it. There are, there's, there's various names of various friends over the years on the back of this, um, and it kind of draws you back the next year. So, this year, if you've been on that masterclass, of course you want to go back next year because you felt pick the bottle. Yeah. Uh, this one was interesting. Uh, the masterclass was held in Lag for the first time, so they did, they're now alternating the festival between Lag and Lockranza. So we are in Lag, their new distillery, with lots of Lockranza fanboys and fangirls around, everyone very conscious, like normally the festival's held in Lockranza. And Stuart Bowman, Lockranza's distillery manager, was leading it. And we were trying these drams. They were, it was a great selection. And uh, a couple of the people on the masterclass were like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. We we just like the the typical Lock Ranza style, um, just because they're passionate about what Lock Ranza was. And then right. you vote for the the top dram. This one got voted. And some of the, the murmurings were, no, this is like, this is definitely uh, sherried Lock Ranza. This is exactly what I like. And then at the end, they reveal to you what it is. And it's, um, it's a uh, Ribeiro del Duero cask so it's a northern spanish red wine right cask and uh the people that thought it was sherry or they thought it was typical actually ended up voting on only the second wine cask um finish for the festival release which i think is cool that's, that, very that's cool. the level of geekiness i go into but it was it was a cool moment it was like yeah we all like this we think it's one thing it turns out to be another that's sure. fine yeah. and that's the yeah. thing it is okay and i think what's so great about that jack kind of going back to what we talked about earlier with tasting notes right it's okay to be wrong i can work in whiskey for the rest of my life i'll still probably feel like i know nothing you know i'm nearly 10 years in now i feel like i know nothing it's a passion and you're always learning and i think that if you come at it from the point of view of oh no i can't get anything wrong you're never going to get anything right do you know what i mean yeah i think that's the way we need to be looking at these things now you have to be open to try new things and thank you uh thanks man. aaron always surprises me with their cast types or their maturation styles or um, their presentations and it's why i keep going back um so i should say if you are on auctions, there, there's a bottle which is a bit like, well, it's the same, uh, that shape, but it's it looks like a guitar case 
mm. a bit like that, and it's white. That's the only other wine cast finish. It was a Calvados finish, a nine-year-old. Okay. Um, so those are the only two festival single cast releases that are a wine cast. So I think they're ones to look out for. There's never been a petered festival release, and I feel like that should come soon. Yeah. Considering they've now got lag and it's it's all heavily petered. Uh, so uh, 2012. Uh, it was distilled, bottled 2023, 305 bottles, 56.5 percent. Nice. And so when when Sorry, you tasted it, 305 bottles. This is fucking special. Yeah. And so then when you when you did this at the masterclass, I said it was a blind tasting. <laughs> blind tasting. Of course, it was a sherry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we were all nice. writing down our notes. Have you tasted it yet? And you know how Chinese whispers <laughs> happen. Someone said, I think it's a bourbon. <laughs> what do you think, bourbon 2007? And that kind of goes around. And so I think that's how we settled on this. Um, and it was a great surprise to find out it was Ribeiro del Duero. And I don't know much about it's a It's a, a really a fine northern Spanish red wine next to the Rioja region. Yeah. I know nothing um, about but, wine, especially nothing about Spanish wine. I, I know a very, very small amount about French and Italian, but yeah, no. This is yummy. I can tell you that much. Yes. Wow. Yes. CV's face said it all there. He literally <laughs> looked like a kid in a candy shop. I might cut to a shot of Jake and I. Jake was... <laughs> was yeah. I mean, <laughs> like fucking... What's his name? Charlie, who won the Willy Wonka golden ticket. No, no, no offense. The fisherman is in tree, but like, I, I'm oh, much... Me too. Uh, you know the too. incredible thing about this tasting and it never fucking happens it's just getting better and better and better yeah. and better and better every fucking dram we've tried is just wow there's more do you know what i mean and they're all different <laughs> they're, yeah, they're all, all yeah. different in their own little ways really fucking i think cool. you know that's one of the cool things about aaron especially in that you know they've got some pieces of stock it's one of those like desert island discs like whiskeys mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if you're going to choose a distillery that you could drink from for the rest of your life if in whatever weird situation you can only choose one yep like Aaron would have to be up there because of the versatility of the spirit and Definitely. the variety of the casks dib 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 fucking brilliant yeah no I agree with that agree with that 100% so it's £175 but it's yep. the festival okay. cask there's only 305 bottles people at the festival have picked it so I think it's yeah sorry you're only buying it if you're there right it so sells again out, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's 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 placed but it's not single cask no a single cask it, yeah. oh it is single cask 300, sorry. 300 bottles mate. Yeah, yeah yeah well that's what I thought obviously you know um and again going back to the auction thing I'm always surprised that the festival releases don't just go crazy and maybe that's where Aaron is at the moment but like you can if you want go back to 2011 and buy every single festival cask on auction throughout the course of a year. I kind of see them all creep up. Pop up. Yeah. There can't yeah. be many other distilleries where you can... But do you know what that says? That the people that buy it initially, buy it to open it, drink it. There's not... You, it's not like you see the auctions like, like oh, I bet, full pages and pages and pages of their limited releases, special releases, whatever. You know, you see Aaron pop up, there's few and far between, and that's because people are buying it to enjoy it. They're passionate about it. It's one of those series that, like yourself, you know, you go there, you buy it, you open it, you drink it, you're not flipping it. That's why there's a... But the fact that you can pick it up at reasonable prices in auction yeah. is great for people who maybe want to get into it. So at the moment, if, yeah. If you're looking at home, yeah. Yeah. i tell you what. I'll I mean, hold this back. Uh, yeah, worry. I regret <laughs> saying about that Craigie 17, man. I'm not getting them anymore. Yeah, there's a few people. There 70, 75 pounds now. As I think we were bidding against each other as well for someone to alert that hotel car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight up. But this is the thing. I think with Aaron, you can get in now at a good price, you know, accessible prices. Some or, like months, you said, yeah. Jack's stuff that's from a time gone by so yeah, yeah. definitely one to look out for guys in the auctions um and i, I don't normally buy whiskeys at 175 pound a bottle this is probably the only one that i'll go whatever price they charge on the day i'll go for it because and have you traveled all that way like you say you've been a part of kind of choosing you know next year's whatever but you've been a part of the whole process where you want to you know to not buy it would be a waste almost right yeah and i mean one year my dad came up and we both did the tasting, so there's a bottle with both me and my dad's name on it. Other friends have had partners that have passed on. They're both their names are on some years' bottles. That's and lovely. Life is uh, never as long as we hope, and uh, it's too easy to settle into like uh, cruise control. So it's nice mm -hmm. to do these things. And uh, that's such a good fucking point, Jack. Yes. The fact that you're doing this annually and it kind of it's like a really beautiful way of marking time. Yeah. That's really, really lovely. 
I've never really actually heard anyone that looks at whiskey in that way. Certainly not year on year. We have our little moments. We've been Isla, we've been Springman, we've done all sorts of really cool stuff. But that's lovely. And the fact, like you say, the touch of them putting names on bottles, those small things that a lot of people from the who aren't whiskey geeks will be like, oh, who gives a shit? From the heart. You know, I'd pay extra for that, though, yeah. because exactly that, it marks that moment in time of this is what I was doing and this is where I was and it was fucking awesome. And there's attentiveness, like uh, one of Aaron's fantastic uh, head of marketing people has been emailing us in the last two weeks just checking the names for next year's bottle uh, spelt right and in the order that we want it to be. The festival is until June next year. That's incredible. So we're, we're getting these emails just like... They just really look after right. their... That's, uh, yes. That's really, really I'm going really to call special. them disciples. I love that. But love they that. do. They really look after their community. Yeah. Um, and I just noticed actually the uh, illustration of the island is in the shape of a pick, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, very cool. Yeah, it does tie in a bit to the harmony. I think it's yes. just as a festival for these. Because it's very similar to the rare batch label color and everything, but it's just the you got the Aaron festival. Yeah, do they just awesome. change it up a little bit for the music? Yeah, that's cool. yeah, very cool. Um, this is like the taste of autumn. Mm. Dude, me. at the beginning, I was like, I'm not going to finish all of these because I had a heavy day the other day. <laughs> I'm thoroughly enjoying <laughs> I think every I'm thoroughly single thirsty now. fucking whiskey. These are all so good. And yeah. Um, so did you say the taste of autumn? Yeah. Explain that. Talk to me. Like, I mean, at the risk of sounding like some kind of American Karen, not by drink, like a pumpkin spice latte, but like a pumpkin pie. Can't say that anymore, mate. What? Anyway. You can't say anything say anymore. So, yeah, exactly. A pumpkin spice latte. I've no, I don't have one. one. No, I've never had one. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> okay, but like sorry, pum you... pumpkin pie. Like kind of like I get like a real I don't think I've had a pumpkin pie either. But pumpkin. Um, and again again, like there was um okay. I I have got, I've got a couple of American friends who've invited me to a Thanksgiving thing. Like they have um at Thanksgiving they have um like with the turkey, like pumpkin has got like some marshmallows yeah, mixed yeah, in yeah, with it. It's yeah, like yeah. fucking the like the least healthy vegetable you can fucking imagine, but I'm getting a bit of that okay. kind of vibe from it. Because <laughs> there's a sweetness to it, right? Yeah, no, well, I, I, I'm not getting the autumnness off of it. Um, I see, I, it's when very you said sweet, autumn, though. I kind of know what you meant, but it wasn't a flavour. It's like falling leaves. It's yes. like, yeah, oh, yeah, no, that's, see, that's, it's not a flavour thing. It's like a, this is what I want place. to be drinking yeah. in that time and place. That's interesting. Yeah, it's I don't very, get that. I don't get the pumpkin. It's very cozy. No, I don't get just like the, the, the orange leaves. Cozy. Really? This is cozy. Oh, cozy. cozy. That's, cozy. Sorry. That's the perfect way to describe this dram. This is a cozy dram. This is what I want to be drinking on a cold night next to a fire. Yes. Well, you two yeah. are going to look very sweet. Me and Ian are going to cuddle up. We're right. going to have our onesies on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to have a day with our onesies. I'll leave all of your whiskeys, yeah. Jack. <laughs> I'm donating them to a good home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to a new gay couple that just love their whiskey. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's a verbal contract. Uh, Ian spent all day decorating the bedroom for you, so, uh, you know. Exactly. <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. Jack, it is really yeah. good. Ashley, so you've probably tried up this there. along the way now. What do you get from this? Well, no, Jack, Jack have this? you just opened that, sorry? Because that's quite... No, it's, it's up to the top. I opened it last week. Right. Um, I you used to had one or two drowns out at least. Yeah, in, in a previous working life, I used to work uh, for an art house cinema company. I used to go along to Cannes Film Festival every year, and I would take the festival bottling to share with my colleagues in Cannes. That's cool. That was great. I was that, really like that. That time has passed. Rest in peace. Um, so I was like, what? Do, when do I open the festival bottlings? And then I thought, stop attaching such um, lofty prestige to them. Like, find a good time to open them. Enjoy them. You're paid for them. So have you opened this for us? I opened it last week, but then I've opened it for you guys, yeah, because I thought, like... That's very a, a, kind, A single eh? cask festival bottling... This is exceptional. ...has to be the show. Yeah. This is really fucking good. It's up there now. Um, thank it's you. It's taking the lead. Yeah. This is really good. Yeah, I think this is... And like I say, though, I felt I felt that with every fucking drown. And that well. hasn't happened, the like you said. The only thing that I've kind of been on the edge with is between your 13 small batch and your 15 rare batch, there was, like, close competition. Other than that, I feel like we've just ranked up every fucking time. Really, really good. I love, I love Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah. But where I, is he? <laughs> I love Scotch. <laughs> Scotchy, Scotch, 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 Scotch. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is that's that. awesome. So here endeth the non-petered part yeah. of our journey. Cool. So we're going to start with Lockranza, and then we'll go to Lag. But Lockranza has for 
maybe 10, 12 years or so, produced a peated malt between 20, uh, even lower, like 14 ppm and up to 42, 50 ppm. Oh, but really? I didn't realise it was that high. Yeah, various yeah. various batches towards the end of the year in December, but it's stopped now. Now the lag's here. It hasn't they made split the, stuff. Yeah, yeah, right, for um, sure. So they've got a lot of stock and... Is this uh, Macamore? Uh, is it uh, Macamore? Mac- is, Macramore is the one you'll you'll see out on the market with the the lovely little dog tied to a yes. stone illustration. I really like it. I think it's great. Is that getting discontinued given lags coming in? Eventually, now? but there's enough right. stock to, for, okay. to keep on going for a while. Okay. Um, Macamore, you can get it at forty six percent. You can get it cast strength. You can get it as a ten year old now as well. It's. I think Macamore is part of the reason that they decided to build. Um, the new distillery, as well as more warehouse space, it was like, hey, people like our peated stuff as well as our unpeated. Yeah. So we're going back to small batch. We're going across the world to Japan. So some the thing I've picked up is that some regions really like certain styles. Denmark always seems to have a sherry cask, small batch. Okay. Belgium for a while just had loads of rum casks, and there's now doing lightly peated. Japan has gone all over the place, which is great. It had um, a Bourgogne uh, cask, which was Excellent. And then this uh, is a 42 ppm first full bourbon barrel log ranzer. So I think it's the only bourbon other than the next lag we're going to try nice. of, of the whole tasting. So is the ppm like they choose that every year or is they have different batches every year? They did different batches. They ramped it. I think they ramp it up. So they start start, start low. low then they yeah, 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 build yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I didn't nice realize time. they went as high as 50 though. I thought it was about 35 yeah. at so the top end. You can so get a thing called Macrimore Fingles Cut and that's their 50 ppm lock rounder stuff. Cool. Right. Um I don't know if ppm is as important as we used to think it was. Um and so I don't know whether they're going to play with that as much as where the peat comes from. Yeah. Okay. So their their peated malt comes from the northern highlands. Both yep. for Lochranza and for Lag. So it's not Isla, it's not seaweedy. You think what was in the Northern Highlands, heather, pine yep. trees, dinosaurs, I don't know. They all rot down um, <laughs> and then become... Ah, become the, the old oh, dinosaur those, on the yeah, nose. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Get the Jurassic Park and the Triceratops. And so this is a nine-year-old bottled exclusively for Japan. Uh, 42 nice. ppm, first full bourbon. Now, first full bourbon with Aaron is super vanilla super um, fresh, and it retains that, but it's in companionship with this peat, and cool. I think it works very well. And the cool. 42 ppm, that's presumably the ppm of the malt at the time of yes. distilling. Yeah, I yeah. think it's only Tora Vague that are starting to mess around with that. Tora Vague, yeah. Um, Consistently. Harris are giving you the into the bottle now as well with their first, uh, they've just had their first release. They are also telling you the bottle PPM. Um, be all right. Oh, sorry. No, no, yeah. Yeah. yeah, share with me. Let me just... Uh, um, yeah. Uh, and this is 59.2%. Really? And on the back, I can't read it because it's in Japanese, but that's cool. I like that it's in make... Japanese. Um, 59.2%. I mean, it's, oh. it's, it's lively, Hello. but I wouldn't say it's up at 60-odd percent. No. Sorry? This is 59.2. I said it's lively in the No, case. I heard that. I yeah. was just surprised yeah, on, no, on the nose. I, I, I didn't wouldn't hear. say that. I wouldn't say it. It's, it's <laughs> dram number 1270. <laughs> um, we are but humble disciples for Jane, buying all of, of these the whiskeys for you at home. Dram number f- for, uh, 40, 50, 60. So this They're was a... You had a good yen. week, mate. Anyone care to convert that into GBP? No. Is it so? Is it fifty something yen? One hundred and four pound. But I think that was with my auction fees, packaging fees, and sending back to UK fees. Okay. Which took how long? That Japan. I can get it quicker from Japan than I can get it from Belgium. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, Brexit. It is weird. Well, but, thank you, Brexit. Yeah, thank um, you also, Japanese efficiency. And... But yeah, Japan and DHL <laughs> gets here yeah. by the end of the week if I order on a Monday, which is... Wow. You, you pay for it, but it's here. Amazing. Um, I can't fault them. Yeah, that doesn't, um, that doesn't oh taste like a 59% oh. at all. The sweetness it's there. Super creamy. Yeah. It's so creamy. And um, for a long time, Japan was one of Aaron's biggest markets. I think it still is, <laughs> along with France. Um, uh, one of their initial... Uh, Big kind of, um, I would say, I don't mean fanboy. One of their, you know, this is um, marketeers, right? Uh, Whiskey Limited in Japan really helped 
bring uh, single casks of Aaron over to the Japanese market, get them to it. And I think it's really beautiful because there's um, this small upstart distillery in Scotland <laughs> and then this market in like Tokyo that is loving it. For sure. <laughs> but this is the thing. Yeah, look, I, I think it's really interesting what you were talking about there a minute ago about different markets liking different flavors. And, you know, as a bottler ourselves in our professional lifetime, that's something that we're always looking at and trying to, you know, understand. And so many different markets have different palettes. It's really interesting. But you're right. When you can see something just take off in one area, it's so wonderful to see. This to me is, um, this is Kranikin and a cigar. Interesting. What are you guys thinking? Peated Frosties. I, I, I love that. Okay. And then, then he's just come up with one. The stuff in the middle of Oreos. But smoked. Peated. Smoked, right. Yeah, yeah. The cream. Yeah. Cream. Yes. Oreo cream smoked. Do you know what I mean about the really you ever tried Kranikin there? Kranikin before? Yeah, yeah Kranikin. Okay, there's, uh, this like OT a, porridgey, yeah, desserty, raspberry bits, or whatever. Uh, you guys got this off the Jura, the thirty-two year old Jura. Yes, up in Campbelltown. Aren't yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kranikin. Is that film. is that the dessert we had the night before? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. porridgey OT. That's right, and exactly. We had it with raspberries as well, but it could be with whatever. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that it's Kranikin, but heated Kranikin? Yes, mm. creamy, and sweet Oreo centers. <laughs> that's our fucking <laughs> naughty little no <note>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I find with a, a bourbon cask, there's a clarity to it. I can yeah. smell this, and it's like my vision is clearing, and I can see uh, more into the Bond warehouse or something like that, poetic. But um, I think when I first started getting into Aaron back in 2011, I liked sherried whiskey, and that was kind of the stuff I went to. Then I was kind of educated over 10 years from James McTaggart to like, no, we're doing really good bourbon barrels. Yeah. And... Um, I'm, I'm sorry, this is nearly the only bourbon one I bought, but there's just no like freshness to it. And you, you could mix this if you wanted. You could add soda water and it would be amazing. I think it's beautiful on its own. It's not iodine peat, is it? All? Not at it's, all. Um, uh, and it's it's much sweeter than I think the kind of peat suggests. I'm, we've been talking about various, like, the Kranike and the Oreos, right? There is a real, um, I can always see, like, a surge writing about the crisp sugars. Right. <laughs> like, it's, it's super, like... There is a real crispness to that sweetness, right? Like, I, I can't even think of the other, uh, any other way of describing to yeah, it. Like, no, you're right. Um, there's a kind of slight, kind of you know, almost like a horse licking a sugar cube. Yes. No, I know exactly what you mean. Um, sorry, Jake. Please never apologize again. That's ridiculous. Mm. But I'm sorry. I only bought one bourbon. You bought like fucking seventeen whiskeys with the amount. Jesus yeah. Christ. In some years. This is really cool, though. I love the balance between the bourbon and the peat. And yeah. I think that if this had been in one of the wonderful sherry or interesting wine casks that we had tried thus far, it would be something entirely different. And I love it exactly as it is. It reminds me a little bit of some of the Port Charlotte, very, very different peat, but some of the bourbon Port Charlotte yeah. casks that we have, purely from the fact that it allows the peat that is to shine through. Yeah. And I love sherry. I love wine with Port Charlotte, with Aaron, with whatever, right? It just brings a whole different being to life. Well, they can shroud that. But it can yeah. take away from yeah, and yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. like you just said, this is set and setting. I can start to see yeah. the fields of peat. I can start to smell the bonded warehouse. I'm all of a sudden in a place that this whiskey was created. And that's what this does this, this very, very well. This manages at the same time to be at, at kind of the same time laser focused into that kind of bourbon peasiness, but also have this kind of beautiful kind of rusticness mm. to it as well. Like I could imagine this as the perfect accompaniment to some kind of rowdy medieval banquet where you're pulling, like you're in front of a fire with some like chainmail on, like pulling a leg off of a chicken. Wow, like, that's vivid. That is vivid imagery. Are we I've never even worn a chainmail. I don't know about you boys. But <laughs> is Ian is right in there. That's Canada an interesting in time, Ian. <laughs> it was controversial time Canada as well. Like, <laughs> no, I think we're first. Henry <laughs> Tudor. Yeah, I think we're more Tudor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Early Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> We're all the way back in the Tudors. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Do I get out what's in this whiskey? <laughs> and isn't it cool Jesus as well Christ. that um, predominantly this whiskey is drunk by lovely people around Japan? 
And then <laughs> somehow a bottle or two has found its way back to the UK. Yeah. And there's no. And you're talking drink about, drink. Yeah, yeah, chainmail, medieval. I yeah, bet they don't talk about that sort of shit over there. No, <laughs> no they just go for a joust. <laughs> this is really yummy. This is cool. And sorry, uh, not that it matters at all because it's delicious, but just, is there an age statement on this? Uh, nine. Nine years old. I was going to say, this is about 10, right? Cool. Yeah. I mean, I would have said it right after he told me it was nine. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> what strength is it at, Jack? Uh, yeah, 59. 59, 59 isn't it? Yeah. 59 too. It is so smooth. Yeah. This is, yeah. from an alcohol perspective, this is the best integration thus far. So, so easy drinking. Not that it's not bolshy, not that it's not got a huge character. It just, I can go swimming in that glass, man. And yep. you don't get any nose prickle. You don't get anything disturbing any of the no. flavors. It's, it's, um, oh my god it's special yeah it's it's, very special. again we've leveled up yeah i don't think we could or would yep no agree but um is there something I don't quite nice about age statements that are just off the uh the normalized age statement so we know 10 year old maybe 12 year old but what about a nine year old or a 13 yeah. year old as we've been trying like yeah and jane mentions this a lot actually yeah if it's, if it's ready for bottling get it in the fucking bottle right yep that's the thing. It, like, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of whiskeys that maybe will need to be 10 or 12 or 15 or whatever. But I think past that, like, why are we being so particular? There is no reason. If we're looking at it from a flavor perspective, it should really only be, noted, be denoted for an information point of view, right? This is how long it is spent in this type of cask. And these are the reasons that you're getting these flavors. But yeah, nine, bang. Like challenges the 15 yeah. challenges the 13 Ch you know it's a different thing it's beautiful though right. really 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 cool i we, love we, that we, we've got to get some lags in otherwise we're gonna <laughs> yeah well otherwise I... sam might be joining us for an hour <laughs> yeah, episode. Right. yeah cool let's get a couple of lags in let's uh let's so we'll start with this one let's say goodbye to lock in the north we're going south to the um the southern end of the isle of Arran. uh lag distillery uh started production in 2019 Heavily peated. The whole idea about lag is that let's do the counterpoint to Lockranza. It's heavily peated, but still using the same peated malt from the North Islands. Yeah. Jack, just out of the two lags there, because I am conscious about time here, we have kind of overrun. I'm not complaining. I'm loving it. Out of the two, I think we should only pick one because we're going to go through buy and don't buy. What one should we have? I'd say go with the bourbon because we've we've given a lot of time to Sherry. If there's time for that, we can go on to it. Okay, yeah. Right, let, let's get it in the glass, good. see what happens. Um, I really like the style of the lag bottles. It is unashamedly very modern. The kind of, you know, modern art of someone with a thick paintbrush that kind of to create the, the kind of lag lettering. Um, the boxes, it's very monochrome as well. I like it. One thing that I will say about lag as well, and I'm not even going to put my nose to this before saying it, their new make liquid is outstanding. I've not had this. Is, there this is my first very, one. very few Likewise. distilleries where you try liquid off the stills and you go, ooh, that's a bit good, isn't it? And this, in my opinion, is one of them. And I think that what they're doing there is very, very exciting. I cannot wait to see what comes out. They've not tried a huge amount of lag, so thank you so much again, Jack. You brought some incredible drams today, and sharing this sort of stuff is amazing. But I think that people out there, you like Pete, you're interested in sort of branching out a bit. Lag is an incredible, in my mind, an incredible expression of young heated whiskey on its way to greatness. I agree. So it's uh, this is the Kilmore edition. This is their kind of part of their core range now, three years old. Um, and this is the bourbon barrel matured, 46%. So they're doing it the same as like the Aaron 10, mm. um, 49.99. I don't think that's a bad price point for, you know, the first few whiskeys that come out from a distillery. The, the inaugural batch was up at about 70, but the box is a bit bigger, but it's still the same kind of principle. I'm getting... Um, wet summer bonfires you know you're trying to light yeah. a bonfire in summer it's raining you've got a load of nettles on there or something and yep. it takes a bit of time going i think it's gorgeous yeah 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 i know exactly what you mean it, it's very simple and like i said very modern i think there's not you don't often look at a box and it to evoke some of the flavor notes mm. that you're getting right 
you know what I mean? Like there is a kind of slightly tariness to it. Like there is, you know, it is. I said there's quite a bit of tariness to it. And I love that. Yeah. Like the charcoal bonfire notes. Like that is so simple, but also brings across what you're tasting at the same time. It's marketing genius. I love it. Sorry, we're at, okay. I was going to say we're not at a high strength. No, again, 46. Are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. 46, but it, it's really good at 46. Yeah. It works very nicely at 46. You know me, I'm, I'm one to say this is too thin. Well, Stevie certainly one to say this is too thin. <laughs> and I think that this works really nicely at 46. And sorry, the age of this, is it three or three? three. I mean, it's yeah. So you can really taste that new make there, that, that yeah. cleric there. It's and it's great. Light. It's good. Oh, massively light, yeah. Um, and uh, they could have gone down the route like Isle of Harrison waited seven, eight years or something, but cash flow, you've got to keep stuff coming out. And they're sure. always happy to release younger stuff as well. And I think in the future, it will be really interesting to go back to these three-year-old ones and, and try them in comparison to a 10-year-old lag. Yeah. Alla, Port Charlotte. Alla. Definitely, definitely. And it, it, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's going to be up against tough competition, right? You've got Harris. You've got Tora Vague. Um, you know, there are other distilleries who are starting to beat. Glen Allerkey just put out the uh, the Mickle Tall the other week. You know, it's a five year old Peter Glen Allerkey. I have to say, if I was working at Lag, I wouldn't even be stressed, mate. I wouldn't even be looking around. Fuck, this is new make. This is challenging some of the aged Port Charlottes that I've tried. And you know how much I love Port Charlotte. I don't say that lightly. This is fucking incredible liquid. I wouldn't even be sweating if I was up and there. I'd just be fucking singing along, making my whiskey, <laughs> putting it in cask, and banking on absolute gems like Jack here to go out and market it because this is what Aaron are doing so well. And it's only become apparent to me today and having booked this, you know, the, these last couple of weeks, having trying to book this thing and I missed it. I'm very, very annoyed. But they take care of their customers. Yeah. And as a result, their customers become they're fucking brand representatives. And that's what's happened with you. You haven't even been up there. You love it. You've bought into the brand on such a Mate, high level. Mate, if I was to go up there. And then you don't get this from other brands, right? You look at McCallum and then there's hype, but there's hype in a very different way, right? There's hype because oh, I can make money off of McCallum. Yeah. I'm a bottle flipper. I'm a bit of a cunt. There's nothing personal. Rip some money know? out of the market. This, speaking with, Stevie, speaking with Stevie about his love and, and growing love passion. for Aaron over the years, his passion, it has grown. Yeah. Speaking with you today, Jack, it's like, you don't get, it's like me with Glenn Tuckers. It's kind of weird. It's like, are you all right, mate? What's up? But then, <laughs> but now we sat here for an hour and a half and it's like, fuck, I completely get it. You shared every element of this with me and I'm with you, man. Yeah. I can't wait to go out and share an Aaron with someone else, right? Because that's the excitement. And I think that is what Aaron is doing so well, Yeah. you know? Really, really good liquid, but really, really looking after their customers, making sure that they're involved. I'm sure we'll be up there very soon. <laughs> I would. And, love and I bet you're kicking yourself now that I'm, you haven't I'm been there. so frustrated. Jake has lived in there for, what, four? No, six months. Six months. Well, it's, it's, it's a beautiful island as well. I would love to have a <laughs> fucking walk around there and come back to a nice hotel and a dram afterwards. Like, yeah, after it. Well, maybe next time me and we go up, we, we, we'll pop over. Yeah, man. If Jake doesn't want to, I'm then up, we'll leave him go. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll get my boots <laughs> out and we'll... we'll have Should we maybe bring this to a bit of a roundup? I think yeah. so, yeah. I don't buy a fucking... Where do we even start? Too difficult, yeah. Where do we start? Where did we start? We had All small, the way back. A at small the beginning. batch? We had... <laughs> Could you pop them up on the, the shelf, guys, just yeah. so the people at home can see? That'd be awesome. Do you want them in order of what we... Uh, yeah, that would help remember. if you can remember. If I had a vague order, it'd be no. helpful, but... Uh, I Jesus. won't be able to help. That's empty, isn't it? That was after that one. We had that. That was next to that one. Yeah. I also know. I'm out of space already. It's like we're in a, it's like Crystal Maze. Yeah. Right now. At the end. Uh, that one first. Okay. And back. After your lumber. Is it there's no room? This is the first time that that top shelf has been full. Full to there is too like much. Like this whiskey. anyway. Literally too much whiskey. So um, sorry, how many whiskeys have we done? <laughs> Just like to say at home, please drink responsibly. Make sure that you're staying hydrated right. <laughs> as you sample through the entire Aaron. It's only three o'clock. It's ever been released. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it is a Friday, so. Yeah. 
Okay, so we started with a small batch. You said seven and eight-year-old whiskey. Yeah. That was half sherry and half bourbon, if I remember correctly. Yeah. See, I haven't had too much Gen. to drink. I'm all right. Gents, <laughs> uh, where were we at on that one price-wise, sorry? Uh, it was in euros. It was... 59 euros, if I remember. 54 pounds. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what we said. Okay, so 60 euros, let's say. Uh, nice round number. Stevie, do you want to start? We'll go around that way. It's- buy, don't buy. Oosh. I'm going to spoil it for everyone at home. It's it's a buy all round. There's some ooshes in there, but yeah, that is a buy. Listen, okay. cool. 60, qu- 60 euros, for God's sake. For sure. Ian? I'm going to be controversial, and I'm going to give that a don't buy. Okay, cool. Um, I think, obviously, you've got euro conversion shipping over. It's a little bit pricey. It was very nice. I think there's other things you could get for 60 quid that, or 55 quid that I'd maybe rather get. Fair play. Jack, uh, I know you've already bought all of these. Listen, no, I did buy all of these. <laughs> okay, so, but now... Would you buy again? Would you buy it again is the challenge for you. It's an even higher standard to reach. Would you buy another bottle of this? Oh, absolutely. I haven't picked up that chocolate um, apple crumble on many errands other than next year's festival bottling. Okay. We all said in, in the masterclass, oh, chocolate, that's weird. Like dairy milk chocolate, so okay. I was surprised to see it in that. Definitely. Cool. So a strong buy there. Lovely. I'm going to side a little bit more with Ian. It's a fine line for me. This yeah. is the only one of the day that hasn't been like, ooh. It, it was nice. It was good. Didn't do everything I wanted to. So I'm great start. On to the don't buy, just purely for the fact that I know the rest of them are going to be yeah. so strong. <laughs> I want to. I want to seem like I'm not. You need being to biased. save your money. I need to exactly right. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah, say yeah. buy to all of them, I'm going to be broke. So <laughs> I'm going to say no on that one. It's just a close one. I think it was very cool, but just a don't buy on that. Which moved it on to the second dram, which was a slightly older bottle that you've managed to. Yeah, keep hold of there, Jack. This was the port, port and sherry, and the oh, sherry. No, yeah, it's yeah. a definite buy for me. And, and what's the price? It doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Pay my money. Here's my card details. Selling his kidneys. Whatever. One hundred and fifteen. One hundred and fifteen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I love this. This is sorry, Ian. Thank you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought we were just <laughs> relax a little bit. That's <laughs> time for everyone. Settle to talk. in and shut the fuck <laughs> up. Oh. He'll give his rain first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a bit ahead of myself there. It was so good. It was juicy. It was jammy. It was everything I love from Port and Cherry. 115. Like I have to be realistic because it's easy to sit here sometimes and go buy, don't buy, right? But if I really had to get out my card and pay for it. I probably wouldn't, but that is no offence to that liquid because it is such good it's liquid. It's just a little bit rich. The price, po- given 110 on the, you know, the rare batch. So okay. it's a don't buy, but I fucking love the liquid. Okay, fair enough. Wow, okay. That's Over awesome. to you, I'm really Sorry. surprised by that. I'm very surprised by that. That's a, that's a strong buy for me. That's yeah. that's verging towards an oosh. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I think 115 is actually not unreasonable for kind of, you know, Limit very lim- highly limited edition, like ten plus year old, like liquid. Yeah, that's that's a that's a strong buy. For me. Yeah, well, cool. we're going on retail anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not your yeah. time I'm anymore. Sorry. It's Jake's turn now. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, Jack, are we buying? Are we don't buying? Yeah, where are you at? I'm six editions into this. Question, so <laughs> yeah, right. I'm buying anything. Don't even no. bother talking yeah. to Jack about this. <laughs> He's got all of them. If you want to buy one, you might want to speak to this guy. <laughs> I would agree with Ian. I think that's a very, very strong buy. I'm actually shocked by you, Stevie. And I appreciate price point is very different for everyone. Yeah. I think maybe you've got your purse strings a little bit too tight there. I, I, w- I think that you would stretch if you were pushed to it. I think that if I had a bottle and you didn't have a bottle, you'd be jealous. No, I wouldn't because you'd share it. I know I so, would. I know I would. <laughs> I'm going a strong buy on that one. I think that was yeah. delicious. Yeah. The balance between the port and the sherry. To me, showing that they really have great cask management well, there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the small batch 13, Stevie. Uh, sorry, Jack, price point, sorry. Uh, this was about 72 quid. 72. But I didn't sell any more, but um, okay. if you could travel back in time. You know what? For for Reed, yeah, for 72 quid, oosh. That's a fucking oosh for yeah. me. That is a absolute bargain. It was a step down from the 15, which I fell in love with. Um, you can't go wrong. 70 quid. Look what you can get for 70 quid. Look what you have to pay for 70 pounds these days. Yeah, 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 Trash. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, I think it's a step up from the 15, and it is a very, very fucking strong oosh for me. Wow. Yeah, yeah, strong yeah, yeah, yeah. oosh. Cool, cool, cool. I love it. Jack? 
uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. There's there's so much connection with any of these special Aaron casks that a lot of us uh, quiver over behind the locker rooms or something when we hear, there's a champagne cask. So, I mean, <laughs> any, any time it comes out, uh, I, I'll be going for it. Um, I was so pleased that it, it tastes great still. And I agree with you. I think 70 quid in 2023, here we go. The price point's fine. That's yeah. the state we're in, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I agree with Ian. It's a massive oosh from me such an incredible dram age isn't everything because i i wouldn't say that it, it outranked the 15 but they were side and side they were two different things and the 13 gave a lot massive massive oosh there yeah yeah that i mean that's the favorite that's my favorite whiskey under like 75 pounds i've had it in a long in a long, long time, time. That's strong. point is just such a good value for yeah, money. Yeah, that's really strong. Yeah, well done, really, Aaron. Really good. Aaron. Really good. So moving on to the 15, Stevie, you brought this one. Thank you so much yep. for sharing. 110 at auction, 120, 30 retail, yep. I remember. Yep. Cool. If I was to buy at auction again, I would happily pay retail prices, so 130. Yes, I'm bidding on one now. It's a fucking strong buy, a strong oosh. That is the whiskey I fell in love with with Aaron. It's so sweet. Um, I know what you mean by the 13, but I do have that sweet tooth. Yeah. yeah. That, for me, is not the winner today, but that's that's second ranking. Okay, big, big oosh there. Stevie, yeah. you're never going to talk to me again. I'll have two of the 13-year-olds instead, please. So, all so, the so, more for so, me, so, mate. Why? I yeah, because I'd have two of the I'd have two of, two of the 13. Well, I don't know if you're looking at that objectively as an independent bottle in and of its own rowing to Well, the pit. <laughs> what can I say? You've said what you've got to say. I'm yep. moving on because I disagree. <laughs> Jack, what do you think? Um, I mean, I've got the 17-year-old Calvados in this series, but I haven't got this one. I haven't got the Bordeaux one. Having tried it, how badly do you want it like if i were to pass you a little shank how, <laughs> like how I'm, badly would you hurt him to get the rest like of I've his box for the nail i'm like christ ow, ow, ow. yeah i kind of really a shank yeah. watch yourself on the way out stevie he's you gonna know, rub you but yeah thank you so much for bringing that along because you know is it cool to try it, it it's incredibly cool to sorry try jack i missed that was it a buy absolute buy yeah thank Stank you on a nail buy i don't know if that's a good uh, yeah yeah <laughs> He does sure. himself to get it. Okay. I think that's the same. Okay. Buy. No one to get you for Christmas. For me, definite, definite buy. Verging again on Anoush. I just think uh, I would agree with Ian. The price point, if you compare the rare batch to the small batch, I don't necessarily see the jump in value. I appreciate it's two years old. Well, actually, Jake, if you compare the, the, the rare batch to the one that you all. The uh, was it 115 for the uh, festival release, music festival yeah. release? A little yeah. bit different though, because that's a single cast. But... No, I know. So, all Flavor. I'm saying is it's a strong buy. What you I will enjoy. pay 110, 120, 130. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not ooshing it just because I've, I suppose, or ultimately because I've tried something else in their lineup that is that much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. But still just ranking right next to it. Yeah. It's a strong buy. I think it's a fantastic liquid. I'm just a little bit confused as to the jump in price point on there. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I but agree. Strong, strong buy. Rare batch. Very, very cool. Moving us on to the Fisherman's Rare, Fisherman's Retreat. Oh. Sorry, I was about to say the Fisherman's, fisherman's Friend. Friend. That's which a very different taste. Yeah, very, very different taste indeed. <laughs> the Fisherman's Retreat, um, which is an awesome brand. Please do check it out if you don't know it. Stevie, thank you for bringing it. Talk to us. Um, you bought it already. I think it was like 60 quid. Yeah. Something like that with a discount. I think it was 75 pounds RRP. Let's remember that's 50 centimeters. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. 75 pounds RRP in a 50 CL bottle. Yeah, so is up there. Um, I really liked their tasting. I really enjoyed it today. I think it needs some time to breathe, but um, uh, I wouldn't buy it again. It, it's tough because I bought it. Um, it's a don't buy. There we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I think. I think for me as well. That's actually like there was nothing bad about it. It was just. Not my favourite of the tasting. I think it's probably a don't buy. We've had enough other wine cask, Aaron, like would buy. Okay. I'd have the rare cask above that as well. So I think it's a don't buy for me. Okay. Just on the same basis. Like, Fair enough. It's not a bad whiskey under any circumstances. I feel bad about saying it. Okay. Um, But yeah, I'd, I'd stick with the others. Okay. All right. Jack, this is a new one for you as well. How did the Yolomba wine cask fit in? I really liked it. And, you know, as deep as I've gone into Aaron... New flavor profile is always uh, intriguing to me. So it's a, it's a buy for me just purely because it's an interesting indie bottler doing an interesting 
cask type that isn't always seen. So yeah, I love that. that's yeah. a perfect answer. Uh, yeah, as a fanatic, you're always you've got to be on the hub. It's got to be in the collection right? as well. Got yeah. to be in the collection. So I, I really appreciate that, Jack. And, and for me, I would agree. I, I think that first of all, Fisherman's Retreat are such a fantastic independent bottler. They do some really interesting liquids. But just from a point of interest, it's not something that you're going to see from the distillery. I don't think, or certainly not something that we've seen thus far. It's a big, strong buy. To be honest, I will buy everything from the Fisherman's Retreat just based on the quality of liquid that I've had thus far. I don't think that £75 is too much of a stretch for a 50 cents a litre bottle. I think that there is a beautiful brand, really, really good liquid. And then we moved on to the White I Stag. Oh, Steve uh, Sorry, price point on this there? Yeah. Uh, I think it was around 135 145 Gosh. Mm. It's expensive. It is for a bottle of whiskey, right? But it was really fucking good. Like, really good. Look, if there was a month where I wasn't bidding or wanting something else, it would be a buy. And this is a bit of an aloof answer. Um, so I guess on that note, I'm going to give it a buy. Cool. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Strong buy from me. Yeah. I, I think, you know, that kind of price point, obviously it is two casks, but two casks together is interesting you don't see it a lot as well and i think actually that in itself is a point of interest that people discard too often um it's super tasty and i love it strong buy cool jack i know you've already bought it i mean it's great to see you guys trying any of the white stags for the first time and and this is number seven white stag one which cost us 95 pound back in the day now sells for three and a half thousand pound at auction Ooh, and you hardly ever see it right so that sets the the first that, one. That puts things into a bit yeah. of perspective. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Like, and if you buy one to drink, one to keep, can you open that bottle now that's three and a half thousand? I don't know. No. Nope. It's <laughs> great to see you enjoy this so much. Yeah. And I think it's that's the ethos and the spirit of it. So, I mean, it's a buy to see you all light up with it is, is a great thing. For sure. For me, it was it's a really very, good. very strong buy, verging on an ouge. I think I'm going to give it the ouge because it's, it, it really, really did stand out. Um, ouge! There we go. No. <laughs> you got it out. Moving us on, the festival single cask, delicious. Price point was 100... 175. 175. A little bit there is. Yeah, it? look, listen, I'm going to be realistic. It's a lot of money, right? 175 quid. I'm not going to I'm not going to buy it. It was tasty. Given the fact that I've going to buy to, buy to a few of these, uh, I'm running out of money here. So, uh, ah. but it is great liquid. Uh, I really enjoyed it. But the fact no. of the matter was, you've got to be there to buy it. So yeah. it's not even like many. Well, that's true as well. That's true. I think that if you were there, your mind might be changed. Like, maybe. Yeah, but maybe. I'm going to bring you along and watch how much money you spend. Well, yeah, if you go. How many mate. mortgages you take out in your fucking house. <laughs> go on, Ian. Fantastic, unique single cask. Tastes amazing. Tastes very different to almost any other, well, certainly other any Aaron and almost any other whiskey. Um, it is expensive for the age. I think if it was a lower price point, it would be an oosh, but it's still a buy from me just because you'd open it up and, and share it with some friends because yep. you'd be just like, this tastes like fucking nothing else you'll ever have. For sure. Cool. Strong buys. Um, I, obviously, I buy them every year, but I'm, I'm super curious to know if on that box or the, the back of the label, if it did say Stevie, Ian and Jake, and it had your names on it for oh. one year only... <laughs> You'd yeah. be there, wouldn't you? I mean, that's... I tell you oh, what, yeah. I don't even need my name on the box. That is such a touch, though. It would make me feel like so... The purchase would be validated for months afterwards, right? <laughs> it's such a strong buy. I'd agree with Ian. It's verging on an oosh. Maybe the price point's just slightly too high for that. We've got to take into account not everyone's dealing with the same sort of uh, budget, but very, very strong buy. Really cool expression. Thank you so much for sharing that one. I mean, all of them are great, but that one is a rarity being such a single cast that it is. Uh, the final Aaron, is it? The final, yeah, yeah Lochranza. Sorry, the uh, final, sorry, the final Lochranza. I get that wrong again. Uh, nine year old, the peated one. Um, Stevie. Price point? Uh, 16,000 yen, about 104 pounds when it came to. 104 quid, okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a strong buy from me. Yeah. You know, it's that, that sweet and that strong peat coming through there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a nice change from the sherry and the port we've had and the wine. Um, yeah, 104 quid. Absolutely. Cool. Same story as the festival cask. I think if it was like 50, 60, 70, even maybe as much as 70, it would be an oosh. 105, it's absolutely delicious, but it's just kind of down into a, a buy as a result. Yeah. 
um it's a real pleasure to bring these whiskies back from japan taiwan china and back to the uk so yeah it's always a buy when something comes out in japan yeah, for sure i think the effort that you go to to yes. get your hands on some of these <laughs> just speaks to your fanatical sort of energy about aaron and i love that for me exactly what you just said ian it's a strong buy a little bit pricey but i tell you what next time i'm out in japan i'll be looking out for aaron's yep and then we just had the final lag, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. How much is that a bottle? £49. Five for me. It's great. It's great to see it at that young age. You still get that sort of, you know, uh, distillery character coming through quite strong there. <laughs> I'm really excited to see where it goes. But for something different, something to, to try something new from a new distillery, um, 49 quid. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All day. Um, I'm a bit of a Tour of Vague fanboy. Um we're not talking about Tour of Vegas. I know we're, we're talking about lag. What are you on about? Come on. I'm a, bit, <laughs> I'm a bit neutral towards it. Like, it's not necessarily a don't buy because I'm really glad I tried it. And I think the value for money is kind of there. And I love the kind of packaging and the, what I said about it. At the same time, I kind of slightly prefer the taste of some other kind of newer distilleries that are there at there or thereabouts in okay. terms of the same price point. So... I'm kind of going to sit on the fence with that one. Okay. That's not really an answer, right? And no, you're gonna, not. You're going to give me the sack. Thank you for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe Depending not. on the day. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, no. <laughs> I want an answer from you, Ian. It's a buy or a don't buy. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Because he's a whiskey fiend, right, <laughs> Jack? I mean, I'm invested in this now. I've got a car. It would cost <laughs> thousands of pounds. The fucking hat's over the fence, yeah. boys. I better go and fucking get it, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've got a group of friends <laughs> with another consortium, with another cast. Like, we're in it for the long run. So cool. uh, uh, yeah. it's going to be a pleasure to see where it goes over 20, 30 years. I want to be an old man and see old lag. So you say £49. Yeah. I'm giving that a massive fucking oosh. Oh, I think you're okay. mad. This is three-year-old whiskey that is what it works in the bottle it's nice in the bottle if you don't like pee fuck off it's not for you right 100 percent. i'm not saying it's for everyone it's very very interesting liquid but i think everything from the packaging like we say they've managed to get the flavors onto the packaging there almost to the quality of the liquid to the potential for growth that it has I th i'm very excited about lag as a distillery i think they're doing incredible things i'm giving a massive fucking oosh yeah, really, really cool. Nice. Anyway, listen, that has brought us to the end of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine drams. Woo! I think that's probably the most we've done in a row on one episode. Probably so our longest episode. Certainly up there. <laughs> We're over two hours now. Thank you so much. I genuinely cannot stress enough. It's so wonderful to have people that are watching us come in, share their whiskey, share their journey with us. You've been beyond generous. So thank you so much. Everyone at home, we haven't paid Jack for these drams. He's traveled all the way from Norfolk, over 100 miles, he said. So thank you, mate. Honestly, really, really means a lot to us. Um, we'll be looking forward to, to seeing your collection grow <laughs> uh, and hopefully bumping into you over an hour and at some point soon. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It's, uh, it's great to watch your stuff every single week. And whether I'm washing up um, or just breeding or working, I have you on in the background. It's really comforting. Some oh, light awesome. entertainment yeah, in the yeah. background. I like that. Thank, thank you, you so Jack. much, man. Listen. Thank you so much for everyone joining us at home. We will see you next time. Jack, Slanchevar, gents. Cheers. Nice Cheers. one. Bye.